We all know having the right tools for the job is important, so we here at Jewelry Maker have designed a toolkit which includes all your essential pliers for jewelry making, including round nose and flat nose pliers, wire cutters, as well as a bead reamer, snips and tweezers. You've got everything you need for just $9.95. We provide the tools, you provide the skills. Get creative with Jewelry Maker. Jewelry Maker course gift vouchers are now available. You can choose from a bronze, silver or gold voucher. Each voucher is worth a different amount that entitles you to put towards a course of your choice. For more information, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Welcome everyone to Design Inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me today. You will not be disappointed. I have some of the most exquisite of gemstones on today. I truly, truly do. Um, my name is Rebecca Eddykin. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And today, honestly, we've got a little bit of a mixed media kind of thing going on. Um, so no matter what you're into, whether it be things like your crochet, your macrame, your kumahimo, you are in the right place because today I am joined by the multi-talented, lovely lady, Sarah Alvin. Hello. Hi, love. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Is he good? Good. You have got, you have kind of done a lot of different mediums this week. I have. Well, I was asked to work with cabochons and I thought, well, let's work with them in as many different ways as I can think of um, to get everybody involved. And you most certainly yeah. have, haven't you? Definitely. There's going to be a little bit of something for everyone. You've even delved into wire work. I know, I know. And I'm not really a wire worker. <laughs> so this is going to be great for people who perhaps have cabs in their collection, are planning on getting cabs in the kits today, who have maybe been a little bit worried about exactly how to use them, or perhaps maybe who have worked with cabs in a certain way for a long time and now fancy branching out. Definitely. There's, there's a new technique in there for, for everybody, and if you're just beginning with cabochons, there's a technique there for you too, so you can just get started. And even with the smaller cabochons, I've got some techniques for setting those that are really easy and not too fiddly. I have got two kits for you today, and I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. The price of both of my kits I believe is astonishing and um, if you watch yesterday um, take the price of one of the highest price kits and cut it in half because that's where we're going to be hitting price point wise genuinely some serious deals for you both of them have cabs in but what I love is that the cabs in the two are completely different you've got some beautiful delicate ones coming in your first kit and then you've got some big bolder pieces in your second kit you've also got the chance to own things that I know you all love, such as your Zari threads today. I have got genuine Zambian emerald. I have got one of the best quality of bolder opal I personally have ever, ever seen. I've got imperial topaz coming up for you today. And just so, so many goodies. I truly, truly have. It is not to be missed. So stay exactly where you are. Do feel free to text us in today, everybody, because I've got lovely Sarah Alvin with me and she is going to be looking at loads of different mediums. So even if it's medium that maybe, you know, you don't generally think Sarah touches upon, feel free to get involved and do ask us because we're getting um, involved with quite a few different mediums today. 60777 is your text number. Start your text with the word James Studio or get in touch on jewelrymaker.com or if you've got the app, there's a little button that you can use there to send a message to the studio. If you are into Kumahimo, by the way, and you want to uh, get someone else on board, we've got the discs back. Yes! <laughs> Round and square, they're back in stock, finally. We have been waiting far too long. They're back in stock today. So, so much coming up for you. How about we start off with something a little bit lovable. I say lovable because the last couple of times we've had these chains on, they have been so popular. Why do you think chain is so popular of this kind of uh, look, Sarah? Um, it's an instant impact piece. Um, you've got 
you know, if you've done a, a very um, elaborate um, pendant, for instance, you might want something very quick fix to put around your neckline. This would work for that. But they're very, very versatile. You can take some of those links and just use them as little connectors and make beautiful earring connectors or have one as a center focal that you could wire wrap. Um, there's so many different things and they're so versatile. But I think chain has always been popular in jewelry making anyway and to have such a beautiful collection of that of those um, to me it's just something I have to have in my stash all the time yeah. I feel I feel like I'm not complete if it's not there I know exactly <laughs> what you mean I could understand that especially when they are of this form because these we can use as you would perhaps a, a normal chain you know as a necklace piece but you can bake these so we can use these with things like polymer you can inlay your own polymer pieces in here and actually bake them as part of your piece meaning that they're going to hold together you can use these individually as bales for your pieces if maybe you have got a gorgeous kind of um, shape of your polymer and you want to insert metal into it and just use a little top portion as a bale you absolutely can it's going to be great if you're perhaps not a wire worker or perhaps you don't want to put a hole in your piece you can just bake these within they're great as well for things like your jewel enamel and jewel resin as well. It really does cross a lot of mediums and it's lovely just to suspend a couple of gemstones within there if you wish. Cufflinks you can create with these really simply as well. Let's take a look at all the shapes, shall we? So you've got your beautiful kind of cross shape with the oval interlink. You've got your flower shape with the oval interlink. You've got the woven, almost rope detail, flattened oval on these ones. Can you see that detail and how that catches the light? You've then got that um, kind of motif, as it were, continuing through to the jump rings in between. You've then got more of a kind of um, four leaf clover shape, as it were, and these are held together with a woven jump ring. And then you've got your pear shapes. I love that these pear shapes are running at different um, angles, some pointing together, some pointing apart. You've then got those round detailed closed jump rings holding those together. Snip them up, use individual sections. You could even take off the jump rings and use them for something else. Use them, maybe create some really nice um, chainmail pieces even, centerpieces, really easy with those. And then just keep the individuals as maybe charms. Something really simple but really eye-catching you can create with these. And they are silver plated, don't forget that. So these are big, these are bold, these are totally unique and individual. Your price point today is just £19.95. That's why so many of you have already got it. I've got multi-buyers on this as well. Welcome to you all. Thanks for joining me today. You are going to have such a fab day. I'm telling you that. Um, it's going to be wonderful. You've got some double drill gemstones coming up as well. Don't forget about that. Um, I've got some findings for you. I have got that wonderful, um, one of the most popular do, 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 do product is back in stock as well um, that's coming up for you in a bundle soon as well honestly so much coming up for you today from really high-end almost aspirational pieces to your bargain basement lows there's something for everybody today lots of you have come in for this welcome to you absolutely all today my team is made up of a lovely selection of fine young gentlemen and Ben is here as well <laughs> <laughs> There's Pete, look. Hi, brother Pete. How are you, love? I'm good, yeah. I didn't work with you yesterday. I was in yesterday, Pete. I missed yeah. you. Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't in, so, so yeah. This is where you're I, meant to say, I missed you too. Yeah, I missed you too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That was sincere. Um, I've got lovely Liam as my producer and I've got Mike directing me at the moment. How are you, Tech Up Ben? I love that scarf. I'm very good, thank you. I'm going to get myself one. You can't see Ben's scarf, but it's kind of gorgeous knitted green scarf. And then it's got a big, look at this. It's got a big B on it <laughs> for Ben. How cool is that? I want one. Is that a bit weird though? Can I get a B as well? Or do I look like I'm copying? Because I could do an R. You could do an R. I could. I'm lucky I get to choose. <laughs> You think about it and let me know later. Can you get one with a detachable... Can I get one with a detachable section so it can be a B and an R? Mm. I'll see what I can do, Ben. Um, <laughs> loads of you have come in for this. Congratulations, everyone. Do check out your baskets, because that is flying out. We don't have these in often, so it's lovely to be able to get it uh, when you can. Oh, we're doing this one now, are we? Get in. Can I just wait there one second? Just wait there. I'm grabbing something. I want to show you something. This is 
our very prestigious, very sought after jewellery making award. And this is for design of the year. Now, we give these out at the end of each year. Um, you can see we kind of started doing it in 2012, where the wonderful Rachel Norris won for her Wyatt work. And then the most recent winner is the wonderful Gemma Quo. And she won with a beautiful bouquet piece where the main component was what I'm about to bring to you right now. It's the wire mesh. Now, we've recently-ish started doing the wire mesh course. It is so, so extremely popular. And you can get your hands on this popular medium at a bargain price. Now, have you tried wire work before? have you found it difficult to do some big bold pieces because it can be quite time consuming if you want to create big bold pieces that you want to wire wrap it can take quite some time can't it you can get the same look and a similar appeal using these but within moments just do your frame use your structure and then stretch this over the top of it and you can create beautiful pieces you can encase beads within these Look, that's really, really simple to do. It's just the wire mesh pulled out into these beautiful flower shapes. There's one as a bib, so that's using a structural wire, possibly a 1 mil, um, 1.25, using that to create kind of the bib shape and then really simply stretching, in fact, this colour of the mesh over the top of it. It's this mesh that we've used for that one, that gorgeous red colour. And then we've got another example for you, and that's using a red and the black tone to it. And that's kind of a bouquet type design that we've got there. It's so simple to use, honestly. In case beads into it, twist it either side, and it's done. The lovely thing too is, if it doesn't go the way you want, you just kind of scrunch it back up and it will reform itself back into place so you can use it time and time again. It is a wonderful product, it's one of our most popular, popular mediums um, and you can see the uh, sort of finished result is beautiful, great for fascinators, bibs, bracelet pieces, whatever you can set your mind to really. Let me show you exactly what you're getting in here because there is loads. So if you love it already, it's a stock up offer um, and if it's your first time of trying, we've got a little bit of something for everyone in here. So, I've got a multitude of colours. This is your gold. You get a metre's worth of each one. This is your 10 mil gauge. So that means, are they all 10 mil, are they? They're all 10 mil. Um, so the 10 mil is the gauge, is kind of the way the weave itself looks. You've then got your brown colour, which is a, a bit of a, a down colour really, isn't it? It's almost an antiques bronze, I think. You've got the dark red. All of these are a metre's worth. You've got the graphite colour tone as well. Stay. You've then got your antiques bronze colour, one of the most popular colours I've got to say, and you've got your black as well that we saw used in that first piece you saw with those beautiful flowers. So you have got six different colours, they're all in the same gauge, so they're all the 10 mil, which is great. You've got a metre's worth of each. If you've never ever tried this before, this is honestly, genuinely, one of those products that when you get it home, you think, I need more. I need to get my hands on more. It truly, truly is, isn't it, Sarah? It is. It's one of those products you think, how have I ever managed without it? Yeah. Because it is so very, very versatile. I've caged cabochons with this. I've used it to make corsages and all sorts of different things. And even if you just want a little flourish, this is brilliant. Instead of getting your wire and doing maybe a wire work leaf and having to do lots and lots of internal structure, this, you can stretch it over a frame and it does exactly the same thing. It's a lot, lot quicker. And you actually have that colour tone as well straight through the piece. It's beautiful. Can I say what you've just said, Liam? Do you reckon? Probably not. <laughs> I'm sort of going to. Anyway, <laughs> they they have had something a little bit similar to this on the morning show. It's the 18 mil gauge. This is the 10 mil. Um, it was moti mostly 18. Um, different colours, same lengths and everything. It's just the gauge of it was slightly different. Liam's just noticed that they did it on the morning show and he's gone, oh, well, we're about to do a really good, amazing price. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. Hello, designer inspiration, let's do this. It's not 18 pounds and 70 pence. It should be, if you were to buy these individually, it will be. This is not a chance for you to miss out. I can't say the exact words that Liam said, but let's basically say the price. What? Oh, well, you can't now. I'll be honest with you, Liam's just said, I'm gonna ring upstairs. He's just picked up the phone. I'm gonna ring, I'm gonna ring upstairs to check 
whether or not I can do this. Well, you can't now because the, the thing's up. We've agreed to this price, genuinely. Ben, he's dialing now. Oh, you're on talkback as well. Do you hear him? I hear the dial. I hear the dial. I hear the dial. <laughs> do you want me to Wait. repeat what's said? Wait, hang on. Yeah, go on. Wait. Shh. Sorry, I'm listening. Listening. Silence. He's saying the thing that I'm meant to be doing, okay? Proceed. He's been told proceed, said the thing I've just been doing. I'm about to absolutely write the price on this. Honestly, he's had to ring upstairs and check this now because he's seen what was on this morning show. <gasps> Ooh, 9.95, that's why he had to ring upstairs. We agreed on this before, but we didn't realise they were having a similar product on the morning show and he's just had to do that, which is why he had to run and he just said to management then. Um, we're, they're not the same, we're stressing that. The other ones, a lot of them were 18 mil, these are the 10 mil. You get the same lens, but it is a different look, it's a different appeal, it's a different colour palette. Um, 9.95. If you've got the other ones, you need these ones as well because they do different jobs. They really because do. Because of the different, different gauges of them, the yeah, different widths. Definitely, definitely. Um, so, you know, have it, I have, and I like to have in my stock, collection of different colours and different widths and it allows me to then when I've got a project in mind I know I've got the materials I need to make it. Look up at that screen please Sarah Alvin. Wow. <laughs> uh, be quick. <laughs> that is our name screen. Can I have a quantity check on this? What we started with? Okay, good. We started off with over 100, over 100, almost 150, which is good because by the looks of things I've already got about 70 or 80 of them gone. Have a look at some more of the jewellery that was made with this, just as a little refresh, a little reminder. That's using the black, which we've got in this bundle. That's using the red that we've got in this bundle, just with a really simple frame over the top of it. And then that's a gorgeous, isn't that beautiful? And this, don't forget, this is what won Gemma Crow this award. It truly is, because she did a, a whole bridal bouquet, similar to that last picture you've seen, um, bridal bouquet using this gorgeous medium. Gemma Crow wirework bouquet. And the main component of that was this. She even, this is gonna be a sellout, by the way, over half my socks gone. This is even, um, Gemma Crow brought in, it was earlier on this year, it was only a few months ago, her, she'd made her mum a bridal bouquet using this and she actually brought it in and her mum did walk down the aisle with it um, and it's an absolutely beautiful piece using emeralds and everything but this was the main component. Um, I started off with almost 150 of these. If everyone checks out, they will be gone. So do check out as quickly as you can, £9.95. That's the goner once you lot check out. Congratulations everybody. So let's keep up with the bargain, shall we? Because I've got an absolute bargainacious challenge for the lovely Sarah Elvin right now. Two strands of gemstones, some extra little goodies and some cord as well. Goodness, this cord is really good quality. Oh, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Wow, take a look at this. I very rarely do I get excited about cords, but <laughs> this is amazing quality. Look at this, it's your black woven cotton cord, but look at the sheen. Look at that shine on that. Really get it home to appreciate it, because you can actually see every kind of um, plait almost, mm -hmm. kind of woven detail within this. That is absolutely, it's almost like um, wet look leather. It is, it's got that sort of, yeah, it's got a, a permanent sheen on it, it's yeah. beautiful. That is absolutely stunning, I've never seen this one before. 10 metres worth of that, it's approximately one mil. You've then got two of your gemstone strands. You've got your cushion shapes. Did you get those cushion shaped head pins that we had on the morning show? If you did, I've got them coming up to you um, in a little bit, but in a different colourway. And they'd be quite nice to work with this because it's a kind of a motif running through your designs, wouldn't it? So these are your black agate corner drilled squares. You've got 10 mil and they are 120 carats worth. The luster is fantastic, isn't it? Very rarely again do I compare gemstones to cord, but look how superbly they go. Because they're both super duper high sheen, high shine. I can't think of a cord I've seen that looks like this. Unless it was um, a leather cord. Like a leatherette cord, yeah, yeah. That would have that similar sort of gloss to it. Yeah. Um, and it's just brilliant. I mean, I would be used, mixing and matching this with your, if you want to do your macrame and your kamehimo pieces, match it with some of your matte, if you've got some of the matte wax cords. Oh, love and that And go idea. for that sort of really, you can go for a very masculine feel if you go for that together. Completely, yeah, just looks amazing. Those two Doesn't on, it? But that's just, for me, 
I love that feel, that sort of monochrome feel of the black on the black, you know, and just really going for that one tone. It's just beautiful. That is fab. I love that. I'm, I'm blown away by that cord. <laughs> um, you've then got a oh, gorgeous selection of gems. Um, these are all in your queen shapes and that lovely rich purple tone. And this is, of course, your banded agate. Um, these are 16 mil coins that we have here and they're 260 carats worth. Look at the banding on every individual one of those. If you love banding, you are going to love that opal I've got for you coming up in a little bit because, to be honest, I'm a bit head over heels with it. I know, shocking, right? Um, oh, what a shock, but no, uh, truly. Um, and then, loads and loads of your aluminium beads. These are in the purple colour that we have. You're going to get about 50 of these and they're all your carved spacer beads. I always think when you look at them and spin them, they're a bit hypnotic, aren't they? <laughs> do, 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 do. They're fab. One of the things that I've got to say I adore about these is obviously the colour is superb, but the hole is massive. Mm. Now, that might not seem like a big deal to some people, but it actually really is. You could get leather cords through here. Yeah. You could get a proper fully done Kumihimo yeah. braids running through yeah. here because the hole is six mil. Yeah. Six mil. That is massive, isn't it? It's absolutely for if you want to just have a, you know use this as, even as a as a charm you know a carrier for a pendant um, um, onto your Kumihimo. You could add a, you know a head pin through here and just drop drop gemstones off. And then put it through your Kumihimo braid because your Kumihimo braid, when you do it with one mil satin, mm. is about the, the diameter of it is about five millimeters. Because, but you can squidge it down when you put your um, end caps on. You can get it actually down to a three millimeter braid by actually binding it with something like monofilament. So it's you know it's, it'll definitely go through there, no problem at all. I'm just looking at this cord. This is some of the thickest cord we've had on in a long mm -hmm. time. But look, that goes on absolutely fine. That just is a really simple piece. And you've still got, you could probably even get two of these cords through here. Maybe do kind of a, a design whereby you add one running the other mm -hmm. way. So it'd be just a really simple kind of doubled yeah. up braid. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, they are loads and loads and loads of those. We've got 50 of these ones. Yeah, you could get two of those in easily. So have a look. Loads and loads of those. With your two strands and with that wonderful cord that I've got a little bit of a soft spot for. <laughs> All of these today, your price is not as you should be priced. If you were to buy all these individually, that is your discount code. If you get that before nine, you will get it for not nearly 20 pounds. You'll get it for a little little price tag of just <laughs> I'm waiting <laughs> wait hang on 13 pounds and 95 pence for you on this today unlucky for some but not for you lovely ladies and gentlemen 13 pounds and 95 pence for this massive amount but not only that do you know what else you're getting alongside this do you know what else you're getting free inspiration because this is Sarah Alvin's challenge Ooh. and you're going to be creating something for us by the end of the show what are you thinking I am I'm going to do I'm going to do something with those those, those aluminium beads and mm. I'm thinking I'm going to go for for a neckline piece and try and make it sort of a bib style because bib style necklaces are everywhere at the moment and they're really really popular yeah so I'm going to use those because then they're, they're so light that you can really afford to use lots of them in a design and put them together. Um, and I'm going to try and make them look very, very sophisticated with the other gemstones. And then I think I'm going to do a braided bracelet of some description because it'd be rude not to. <laughs> I don't know after that. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, do treat yourself to the state. It's only 13 95 What a bargain. Oh, sorry, I'm whipping it away now. <laughs> um, have you, do you, would you need this? No, I've You're got, all right I've got a minute, full set here, totally. thank you. Um, where are we going now, Liam? No, oh, right, okay, let me just have a little look for that one second. Yeah, let me just... No, 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 I'm just stretching. I'm just... No, no, we don't have to do them now. I'm just giving a little sneaky peeky. Ah, ah, ah. They're coming up in a bit. 
You're going to kick off the next section with that, are you? What does it look like to kick something off, Ben? Go on. Yeah, it looks like that. Kick it off. Um, <laughs> oh, director's dissing your kick now, Ben. <laughs> He's got a bad leg, I'll have you know. <laughs> He's got a bad leg, he'll have you know. Yeah, feel guilty now, Mike. <laughs> um, have a look at these beautiful round druzy that we have here. Oh my goodness, how did I forget about them as well? Druzy, coming up for you later. Cabs. They are astonishing. I mean, aston. Can I, can I have one? Can I have one, Pete? Pete, have you got one there? Just bring one of those cabs to me. The white druzy cabs. White druzy cabs. Because I'm thinking it'd be nice for you to get this and then have in your mind that you're going to get these later on. I just love them. This is just one. You're getting more than one. But look at this. Ah, cab of druzy. I've never seen a druzy cab before. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that... Absolutely beautiful. You're going to be getting a few of these, not just one in your cab section. Look at that. Okay, they're coming up for you in a little bit. Um, so, this is 160 carats worth of your Druzy. I would definitely be pairing it with my Druzy later on. It's that beautiful blue colour tone, one of the most popular tones, isn't it, in the world? Lots of you are already coming in for this. Can I just let people know that the first person who bought this got two? That should give everyone an idea of the price we're going to on this. It's one of the most popular colours. It's a gemstone we do not have on that often. You can see the quality of this. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to show you because you've got a decent flattened surface of it there that you can see that druzy just twinkling away inside this. It's so, so special. Really, really is. Um, so you've got this gorgeous blue druzy. Your price point today, I think you're going to adore. £6.95 for you today. Did you expect that? I personally didn't. I'm thinking this is a 9.95 strand, personally. Why? Well, because we don't have Druzy on that often, so it's hard to kind of price compare it. Generally, when we don't have a gemstone on often, we know that people are going to absolutely adore it when we do. So it's amazing that actually we don't kind of take advantage of that fact and hike up the price. We keep it bargain basement, low as we can, at £6.95. It's a beautiful beautiful colour palette, gorgeous array of tones in here. I love as well that you've almost got kind of the um, almost like oceanic banding in some of these. It's really spectacular. £6.95. Congratulations everybody all over the world getting your hands on this. New Jersey is coming in for this as well. Yorkshire, Cambridgeshire, lots and lots of you. Thank you everyone for joining me this afternoon. Honestly, some stunners of things today. Opals. Are we doing that now? Are we? This has only been on once before. I've only got single figures. And it's gonna go, is what my producer has just told me. Say that to me again. Isn't that? Spectacular. This is so wonderful. Ruby, genuine, genuine. Liam's just said I'm almost scared to bring on the graphics because it's going to go so fast. Okay, so let me just give you the main info. Um, main info is <laughs> it's genuine 100% ruby. I know that sounds silly, but sometimes when you get ruby, it's not 100% ruby. It can be a bit ruby, a bit of glass, a bit of lead. Uh, not this. This is the real deal. These are in those gorgeous marquise drop shapes. It's your African location. You've got 100 carats worth here. You have got from around 8 by 5 at the end here to 16 by 7 in the centre. Look at the amount you're getting of genuine, real deal, natural ruby. Everybody, on your marks. Get set, go. Now is your time to get on that phone. There it is. ITRU81, genuine, natural, honest, as much as you love it, 
one of the big four big bold beautiful ruby the price point i genuinely think is astonishing let me ask you something two four six eight ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen listen seventeen would you pay a pound for each one of those you would wouldn't you it's less more people than strands your price today 14 pounds and 95 pence congratulations i did give you a heads up on it didn't i 14.95 everybody that's officially a goner we're going to have a few like that today so you know if i give you a heads up do get it as quickly as you possibly can um we're heading over to you in a moment lovely lady with your designer inspiration how did you find this kit oh, absolutely loved it like it yeah but it's nice for me to get things that are a bit different and yeah. cabochons are a bit different for me to get because it's not the sort of thing that I would normally work with in my medium so no. it's really nice to have a, it was a bit of a challenge for me as well and I hope I've done it justice but oh, I yeah. love working with it. You them. definitely have. Oh my goodness I'll be honest I did not realise we had Ander uh, Andalusite in here. Oh my goodness wait we obviously both know the price of you and I Liam. Andalusite that has just made me more shocked at the price of this. This is not me hamming it up. We all look at the prices beforehand and you get pictures of things. And I know this probably sounds a bit bad, but you know, you come in two and a half hours before, there's a lot of product to get through. You're also looking for the product for the next show and working out you know, what we're doing, when and where and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes you will just look at the picture, you'll know the price, you'll know the quantity. Okay, yeah, what about the next one? And I've got to be honest, I didn't even know that this was Andalusite in here. So genuinely, bottom of my heart, the price point of this is even more mind boggling. It was mind boggling before, but now, I, I'll be honest with you, I have sold you a strand of this gemstone at the price of this entire kit today. Okay, this is going to be extremely popular. Now, we're working with cabs. If you have never worked with cabs before, don't worry, because we're going to show you so many different techniques that you should be able to at least give it a go, give it a try. And also, it's going to be nice for you because these cabs are a bit different to normal because they're much smaller than our usual. Take a look at the variety for me. Wow. I've got in mind five cabs and you will be getting the same amount in the same shapes. Ah! Come here you. Oh, my cab finger table normally works very well. There we go, we're on here. Um, okay, so we've got two of your malachite in here. Again, unusual for us to have it. Look at the banding on these. You've got an oval shape. Oh, and you've got the pear shape, which is your 10 carats, and this is 20 by 15 mil. That, for me, is a ring. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, I've also got in here your beautiful Sharite oval. Did you get that Sharite I had on for you yesterday? It was much bigger than this one, obviously, because uh, this is a really delicate 16 by 12 mil. Five carats worth on that one. Again, perfect for a ring size. Not very often you'll say that for a cab, is it? Because often our cabs are around the, our average is sort of the 30 by 40 mil, isn't it? 20 by 30 or 20 by 40, whatever. Um, so normally you wouldn't suggest that as a ring, but you could with these easily because they're the perfect size for me. You've got really cutesy, delicate ring. Look at that. That'd be perfect, wouldn't it? But then you've even got your bigger, bolder ones. Um, so you've got the coin shapes here. 25 mil is the size of both of them. You've got your gorgeous green aventurine and you have that red agate in there, both 20 carats worth. So those are your cabs. I am, um, if you want the bigger cabs, I've got them coming up in the second kit. And I've got to say, um, one of those cabs, I was just a little bit of a lunatic about before, wasn't I? I'll be honest. I went to Liam, have you ever seen a cab like this, Liam? Like, oh, he was like, no, I haven't. I was like, oh, wow. He was talking to me. I wasn't listening. Um, that was coming up for you in a little bit. Um, probably shouldn't admit that you don't listen to uh, your producer, but anyway. Um, this is your clear quartz uh, plain wheels that we have here. Look at the clarity on those. That's spectacular, isn't it? 80 carats worth we have here of the plain wheels reels you know what i mean um from three by one all the way at the end to the bigger boulder seven by three mil that is a lengthy strand isn't it Ooh, lengthy um <laughs> that was a weird noise sorry um, 80 carats worth here gorgeously eye clear do you know what rest on your eye clear i'd go as far as to say that's be that's not a technical term that's a 
Redicanism. Um, it's, you get it so close to your eye, it's just beautifully clear. So we've got that as well. We've got the Spanish treasure, which is your yeah, Andalusian. I can't believe that this is in a kit. I can't think of a time I've ever brought this in a kit. Andalusite, sorry. Um, I can't think of a time I've ever brought this to you. Look at it. Oh my goodness. Okay, now, where's my torch? Peter? Pete? Oh, it's all right, I've got it here, Pete. Thank you, sweets. Okay, you ready? Because this is one of those gems. I've just, I, I obviously have it here in front of me so I can see it properly and I've just looked at it on the screen and gone, wait, that doesn't look the same. Um, the lights are so intense, they hit the gemstone. And because we don't really have lights behind us, just this screen, it doesn't give you a true depiction with certain gems such as this. So I'll get my torch. You don't have to carry a torch around with you to see the gemstones. Obviously, in your house or when you're outside, there will be light all around you. It's just these weird studio situations. So take a look at this for me. Don't forget, this gemstone has a multitude of colour rays running through it. So when I'm turning this on one gem, I'm seeing the burnt umbers go to the gold, go to the green in one gem, just as you turn it. It's stunning. Take a little look, because it's beautiful. Look at that. Look at the clarity that we have on this. As I'm rolling it, you might be able to see. So for example, on that larger, bigger one, and those three that my torch is kind of near, can you see on this one and the next two, keep your eye on one of them. So I'm looking at the green one and I can see it's almost brown there, almost a d dark umber. And then can you see it's going green? Can you see that? Isn't that spectacular? And then the ones next to it that go kind of golden, Oh my days, I just love, love, a tea, love, love this gemstone. Um, let me give you size and detail on it. Um, it is the yeah, Andalusite, obviously, and it's your plain rondelles from 3 by one to 7 by 2 mil. How is this strand to work with? Beautiful. Um, I almost didn't want to use it. <laughs> it's so, so beautiful. Oh. I just love, I was getting loads of reds coming off mine. Really, really bright sparkles of red firing off and that was last night um, last night when I was putting the jewelry away mm. and I was working with under one light source in my dining room not very bright and I was getting loads of reds coming off so these under candlelight are going to look amazing oh change them in different colors can mm. I just show you with one of my favorite gemstones in the world ever and one of the best varieties of it I have ever 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 seen Oh, my days. That is your one locational, one of my favorite gemstones in the entire world. Coming up for you later, under 70 pounds. <sighs> Imperial topaz. <laughs> I need that in my life. That is just beautiful. Um, anyway, this is a really good kit, isn't it? I'm like, there's more. I'm not even stopping there. You've got your um, threads. These are some of the most popular threads that we have brought to you in a while. Relatively new to us still here, aren't they? Relatively new. And um, how much do I get on each spool of these? Do we know? Yeah, 400 metres worth, um, and you're getting three of these. And this is your wonderful um, Zari thread that we get here. There's absolutely loads, isn't there? There is. There's tons. I, I, with all the projects I've done with these, and I've used loads and loads and loads in previous projects, I don't even seem to make a dint on the reels. So you're going to get so many projects from one set of these. You really, really, really are. They have got that gorgeous shine to them. I've got to say, this trio in particular, perfect for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit far out, some might say, although that very well-known vegetable drink I always don't like that description. You know, the fizzy vegetable based drink. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The one who have those really good Christmas um, adverts yeah. with holidays coming. They've already got Santa on all their cans and bottles. I had a coffee cup today. From you had a coffee from cup? From a food restaurant. From a food restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to those other types of restaurants. <laughs> oh, I know. With what? With the arches. 
with the arches. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they've got they've got the Christmas flavours, haven't they? Like cinnamon and really? yeah, they've got oh. snowmen on there. Anyway, anyway. Oh, sorry if I let you down now. <laughs> sorry. I've got um, a free one actually. You got a free one. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm you, I'm gonna go well now you know what you're doing later. <laughs> um, so you've got three of these today in those gorgeous colours, and you have your wire as well. So we've got our. Uh, uh, archetypal wire as it were the original wire which is your 0 0.4 10 meters and then you have your soft core wire which has been extremely popular gold plated and it's 0 0.6 this one now a lot of people I know have been asking about the soft core wire and saying well why is it softer does it hold its shape still yeah it absolutely does because as you're working it it will work hard and the reason it's softer is because there's a higher proportion of copper within this. We're looking at about 99% copper. Well, 99.9% .9 copper actually in this, whereas this one's closer to sort of 95. So it's got much, much softer, much more malleable. It will still hold its shape beautifully. It's just a bit easier to work with. So let's reiterate, because there's so much, and I've been so in awe of it all, it's taken me yonks to go through. And um, so I've got your cabs you'll be getting five you'll be getting these five you know sometimes when we do cabs we'll say oh it's in carrot weight to whatever it's not with these you will get these exact ones um you also get that clear quartz and that amazing strand of your wonderful oof, andalusite the gem of spain named after the location andalusia of course all of this you can hardly get it into shot can you your price point today should be £43.50. I think you are going to be absolutely blown away by the price. Um, are you expecting me to go to 29 95 which would be a bargain? Well, I'm actually not. I'm not. Your price point today, I think you'll be astounded because I truly am. £24.95 a pence for you today. That's nearly £19 saving. 24 pounds and 95 pence i'll be honest with you when we discussed this price that we were going to today upstairs i agreed to 24.95 not knowing that this was what it was i'll be completely honest with you i'm absolutely astonished now this will be a sellout we've got over a hundred which i know sounds like a lot but it's not when you see the amount of people who have already bought it when you see the multi buyers we've got on this that doesn't happen often with kits at all but we've got multi multi buyers on this are you afraid of working with cabs you don't need to be because Sarah Alvin is going to talk us through so many different ways to work with this are you planning on getting your hands on these and you've wanted to for ages and ages and ages well then now's your opportunity have you worked with littler cabs before have you created beautiful rings even with these cabs which is something that perhaps you haven't explored before because we normally do the big bold size you need to have gone off my screen if you have then this is honestly the one for you genuinely i have brought this same gemstone it's not the same strand obviously different carat weight etc i have bought this gemstone to you at the price of this entire kit in the past that goes to show how outstanding this gemstone can be Honestly, Sarah Alvin, what do you think of that price? Do you know, when I got, first got this kit home, I thought it was amazing. And then I, I had to look up, because I wasn't sure that that was what I thought it was. Yeah. I had to check. Yeah. Because I couldn't um, believe that I had five cabochons, those two strands, all that threading material and all that wire. And I thought the price was going to be an awful lot more than it is. Me too. And from this kit, I've only used about, of the two gemstone strands, about two inches off each strand. Wow. And I've still got one cabochon left over wow. and wire left over and tons and tons of the threads left over. So you can make so, so much more than I have as well. I'm <laughs> I genuinely am. I think you can tell that, yeah. can't you? I think it's quite obvious to you yeah. that I am absolutely. Because obviously, I see kits day in, day out. That's you know my job here. I'll see two kits every single day. Yes. If more, maybe if I'm you know doing the late show afterwards mm. or whatever. So I'm very used to our yeah. amazing prices. I'll be honest. This one has blown me away, though. It's blown me away. I would pay that just for that one strand. Yeah. yeah beautiful do get it home those honestly reds, do honestly the reds mm. coming off my strand as i say last night i was packing the jewelry away and i was just blown away it's not a little tiny bit of red i got off mine no it's, it's big 
big fireworks of rag coming off, which is lovely at this time of year. Take that gemstone <laughs> out on a date because it loves to be outside. It loves it. It really does. It loves it. <laughs> does that sound strange? Take it out on a date. Why not? No, take it out in the sun. <laughs> Why not? Why not? If you find some sun at the moment, it's a bit gloomy. But uh, you say that, but Ben had his clip on sunnies on today. His clip on sunglasses this morning. Oh. Um, okay, <laughs> lovely, lovely lady. You have done so much and lots of different mediums. Yes, lots of different techniques. I wanted, with all the cabochons I've got, I've used a different technique for each one. Mm -hmm. So there are seven techniques over the two over kits. Over the two kits. Yeah. So if you think I can't do one, you could always pick up Thank another you, one. Pete. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if his hand was in shot, that's Pete giving me some goodies. <laughs> but you could always pick up another discipline. I mean I, I pick up disciplines all the time. I want to challenge myself to pick something new up. Mm. And that's what keeps jewellery making so fresh and vibrant for me is that I could always throw myself into another technique yes and there are so many whereas if you do other hobbies you might you know get really good at it but then run out of avenues to, to explore and you know don't give up we always say to people don't give up with a technique keep trying because those first few pieces you make you'll probably throw them across the room and think oh but keep going it proves I'm not a wire worker but I keep going with the wire and just keep persevering and I'm, I'm suddenly now able to be a little bit more confident with it Absolutely. And um, loads of you have got your hands on this. I know we started off with quite a bit over 100, but genuinely it's going so, so speedy. Um, what we'll say is if you do want those Zari threads, we're not currently selling them individually. I don't know if we're planning on doing so. If you do want to get your hands on those and maybe you're getting ready for Christmas and you're getting ready for the kids to be on school holidays and you want to get them into something like Kumihimo, we have got the Kumihimo discs coming up later. We've got the disc coming up later on. Um, and you can, because you get so much of that Zari thread, it could be a good one to get the kids into actually. It could. With and that you, amount you've don't, got. Don't be afraid that it's a finer gauge thread, mm. because when you do your Kamihima, you can put multiple strands in each slot, which will give you the same effect yes. as working with something like a satin cord, but you get that multi-stranded effect. Absolutely, and don't forget, because it is finer, you can actually strand gemstones onto it. You can, you can. Uh, it's, it's about the equivalent of a 0.4. Yeah, it's a 0.4, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, you want four strands to equal a one mil cord Fat. if you want to make that sort of thickness of your Kamihima. Let's get started. Okay, right, so we're going to make the design that's right on the end, actually. <laughs> this one here. This one, yeah. And this one's great if you're not a wire worker. Um, you may have come from another discipline like I did. I mean, I've always been into sewing and card making and all sorts of various other disciplines. So you may already have some of the skills that you can bring to the party almost. Mm -hmm. And this is actually crochet. Very, very simple. It's amazing, isn't it? And, um, you know, it's just amazing when you, when you do it with wire how it looks. So I used the 0.4 wire. Um, and mine's been very naughty and my bag will come off the reel. But don't panic, yours will be on a reel. <laughs> it's just decided to have, Go around. have a party of its own yeah, on the way here in the car. Why, why not? not? Um, and can I just apologise to everybody at home? I did have a poppy on. I've lost it between here and home. I'm really, really sorry. Oh. I think it's come off at the petrol station. Oh, no. We'll try and find another one I'm for I'm really, you. really sorry. Um, I did have it when I left Don't the house. Don't worry. That's fine. <laughs> Um, right, so I'm going to leave my wire on the reel and, um, or oh, sort of languishing over there. Um, and what you need to do is the reason you do that is because you never know with, with um, things like crochet how much you would use. So you would never, if you were crocheting with wool, cut your wool before you did a piece, you'd just leave it on the, on the ball. Yes. And it's the same with wire. And 0.4 is beautiful, it's got really good stretch, but you can cro crochet with um, 0.25 as well. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a loop with my wire and what I'm going to do is I take my hook through that loop from the top to the bottom and grab it and bring it through the loop and you're on an 8 mil hook I'm on an 8 mil hook does it matter do you know if, it, if you've got a smaller hook what you'll just need to do is do a few more rows to get the thickness of the piece okay cool um, they you know you can pick up hooks in all sorts of different sizes and um, I like working with it with, when it's wire I quite like working with a larger hook because you get that real sort of open lacy feel okay. that might not be what you're looking for so yeah. if you want a tighter neater uh, finish then use a smaller hook okay okay and basically what I've just done is created a slip knot around my crochet hook I see yeah. okay and you want to hold the small tail mm -hmm. in the hand with your hook okay and the way that I learned to crochet is that you always take 
the thread or the wire away from yourself yeah. and then you bring it back over the hook and towards your heart okay. if you're a right-handed crocheter. Okay. And I know it's one of these things that's a little bit tricky if you're left-handed to crochet but a lot of people find they can crochet right-handed even though they're left-handed. I'm a left-hander yeah. and I crochet right-handed. Yeah. So because when I've seen tutorials, they've shown me right-handed, so that's just how I've learned. Typically, most people crochet right-handed. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my first loop on my hook, and that's the one that's running around the hook there. Can you okay. see? Yeah. And what you do so is you take your thread over the top, and the first loop is always the most tricky one. Okay. So I'll take it over. I've got a funny loop to on there today. Let's pull that. There we go. I'll take it over my hook yeah. like that. And then through the hole, like so. So okay. I've got another one on there. And once you get a few going, and this is what's called a chain. So you take your hook, your wire over your hook, and pull it back through the hole. Now, if your hole closes up, just yeah. push it down your your hook to the flat bit, and it'll open it up for you. Good tip. So that's two, and you're just going to chain like that. You see how quickly that grows? It grows so so quickly. Yeah. I'm only going to do a short piece and what you need to do at home, so if I pop that down, is what you need to do at home is take your cabochon, so if I move that out of the way, and you just need to use something like a piece of satin cord mm. and you need to measure around your cabochon so you know how long a piece of, um, I was going to say kamehima, crochet, crochet you need to do. So you can see I've just gone round and the threads uh, meet up at the end yeah. and that gives you the length of the piece that you want to work. Uh, so that, that you can keep that as a little measuring um, stick. So I'll just get that in there. Okay. Um, so once I've got as many chains on my crochet as I need to go around my cabochon, and I'm not going to do them all for you because it'll take a little while, I've got a piece prepared. What I'm going to do is add one extra chain. Okay. So one extra, extra chain. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to miss that one I've just done. Yeah. And I'm going to take my hook back through from the top. So I've loop. got two loops on my hook. Yeah. I'll hold that up. Can you see? I've got I one, see. two on my hook. Yeah, I see. Yeah. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that back through the, the first the one. The first one. And this is what you. Whoops. There we go. Back through your first one. And you've still got two on your hook. Yeah. And then you're going to take your hook and you're going to take your, your wire and you're going to go back through both. Now it's a bit tricky to get the first one of these going. And we don't always want to go through. There you go, so you wiggle it through both of, both them. of them. So you're back to having one wire on your on hook. Your hook. Okay. And then you, you almost see you've got one next to you where you've just gone through. You're going to yeah. miss that and go through the next one. So you're just basically going through the next of your chains pulling the wire through, so you end up with two on there, and pulling the wire through the both, both of them, and yeah. then on to the next one. And you will carry on going until you've filled up all the chains with what's known as a single. So that's known as your single, your single, single stitch, isn't it? That's it. So I'm just going to take that off, and I'm just going to show you, when you get to the end, how you would finish off a piece. Okay. I've just cut my wire, and all you will do is when you finish and you've got all the way back to the end you pull that wire through like that so you just keep it on the hook and pull the hook through yeah. and then when you get to the end you'll have both pieces of wire at the other end and you can just go through and knit it together mm -hmm. just literally sew it and you'll end up with a piece that looks like this okay and all I've done with this piece is I've taken my flat pliers and I've just gone along the full length of it and flattened it out and I suppose that's work hardening it a bit it too, does. isn't it? It does, it work hardens it and it also just sort of gives you, um, you know, a flatter surface to work with. Okay. So we've now finished with all of that and what you need to do is to leave a good long tail of wire on one end. And the reason for that is I'm going to use this to sew and to link all of the cabochon together. So I probably want about... 30 centimetres of, of a tail of a tail okay. on the end. Now all I'm going to do to start off with is to shape this around and it, it, you'll find it wants to curve in one way or another mm -hmm. and it, when you bring it together you can see it'll almost sit. If I show that, can you see it's got like a conical, it's almost like a funnel. Yeah. So it's tighter at one side than the other. I see, it sort yeah. of almost sits up. And that will sit over the dome of your cabochon beautifully like that. 
So we just kind of want to mark where we need it to be and how we want it to sit. Now what I'm going to do is to use this tail and I'm just going to take it up and down through the crochet and because it's the same gauge wire it's going to disappear and I'm just going to stitch those two ends together with the end of that wire. So it doesn't matter, you don't have to be too neat because if you get any it bits, all ties in. yeah, if you get any bits that you don't, uh, you can see, you can just tweak them in. So that's now helped. Okay, fab. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offer that up to my cabochon and just check that it's not going to fall through the hole in the middle, which it won't. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. Okay. And I'm going to work with the cabochon in there, and I'm just going to hold it with my thumb. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the wire from this side over the back and start to sew my cabochon in. So if you put your thumb over the wire and then pull it, you'll start to sew that together. And then I'm going to just carry on going round and just sew the next side together like that. And you can see it's starting to pull in already. And then pull that together. And carry on going round until you've got all the way around. And you've started to pull that cabochon in. Can you Just see? whilst you're sewing yeah. that into place, it's really imperative that I let you know I'm in my teens on quantity of this now. I started off with 120 and I'm in my teens on the amount of stock I've got. Can I just say one thing? As someone who's got it in their basket, I really, well, I want you all to check out, obviously, but there's one person in particular, two people in particular. One person who lives in Barcelona and one person who's just says Spain. Oh. It's, you've got in this kit the Spanish treasure. The Spanish treasure. And a loose sight. Check out your baskets, you two in particular. You two in particular. Check okay. Out. So you'll spend a little bit more time at home when you'll get that all sewn in. And that is now my cabochon set in there. It won't go anywhere. It won't fall out. And that's all sewn in. So I need to put it on something to hang it on the neckline okay. or to make a bracelet from or to do whatever you want with it. I mean, this, yeah, yeah. this could make the most beautiful ring. Oof. I mean, just I like amazing. That idea. Look at that. I might give that a go. Yeah. yeah, I like that. And don't be afraid of having a... Yeah, that big statement piece. Yeah, why not? Okay, so what I'm going to do to make that is I, as I say, I'm not really a wire worker, but I have a dabble. I have a play. Yeah. I'm not scared of wire anymore. I think that was one of the things that when I first was given a reel of wire, I didn't have an idea what to do with it, and it was kind of a really scary, scary medium. Um, and the things that I found made wire working easier for me was A, to have the right tools, B, to have some time, and C, not to be afraid when it gets to that messy stage. And all wire work pieces get to that bit where you've got tails and you've got um, pieces sticking out in all directions and it just looks a mess and it's not going to come together to be anything. And it's quite often at that point people will put a piece down and not go back to it. You've just got to fight through it. And it just really is that sort of perseverance that I can make this work. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take quite a short short piece for this demo because I'm only going to be um, showing you how to start the weave off because okay. I've got a piece that's finished in there. Um, but what you need is you need about three, you need three pieces and I've used a one mil because I wanted something really structural that's not going to go anywhere. But what you could do is if you could, if you wanted to is use the, two, the 0.6, the softer wire and do, use your wire twister and make a three double. lengths from that. Got you. Um, so it's got double strength. And I'm going to use the natural sort of curve of the wire, so don't be afraid of that. Don't think I've got to have that dead straight. And what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to take the tail of my wire and I'm going to hold it in my left hand, so uh, with along with the wire. And that's the, the little tip I found is don't try and wrap that wire with the wrong hand. Wrap it with your correct okay. hand. So if you're right-handed, always wrap your wire with your right hand. I know it's tempting with the tail to wrap it with the opposite hand. I'm just going to put four little turns on to my wire. Mm -hmm. Four little tiny turns there. Can you just see? I see, yeah. Yeah. And that's the start. That's how I always anchor on my wire is, is with a number of just single wraps around a wire piece. Okay. I'm then going to bring in my next wire. And the pattern I'm doing, if I show you the piece that I've already done, yeah. is 
I'm going to wrap all the way along the bottom piece, but I'm going to jump up and do two wraps around uh, the two wires, and then I'm going to jump up after that and do three wraps around the three wires. So it's nice, easy one to remember. Mm -hmm. So around the two wires, I'm going to go around both of them, over the top once, twice, and then I'm going to bring my wire between those two and just do the wraps on the bottom wire. One, two, three. And if you find you have difficulty getting it to go round neatly and be tight, just take the wire underneath as if you were going to wrap it all the way around, but then bring it up through to do the fourth. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in my third wire. And this is the fiddly bit while you, all your wires are fairly loose. And I'm going to go one, two, three, around all three wires. And then what I'm going to do to keep that sitting flat is I'm just going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to give it a little squidge. Okay. And that just helps those wires sit A, flat next to each other, but B, just really locks them into place. Okay. And you're just going to carry on like that all the way along your piece of wire. So around the bottom one, doing the four, little wraps, three, whoops. Mm -hmm. and if you find it easier with these ends if, to get your wires going through the right places, if you turn your top one out, turn your bottom one down and leave your middle one straight, you'll always know which ones you're aiming for. Mm -hmm. So can you see, I've just tip, mm -hmm. tipped the top one out. And then I'm going to be going around the first two for two reps and repeating all the way along. So that's how we do that. Fab. Very, very simple. Fab. Here's one I prepared earlier. Good, we <laughs> like that a lot. We like that. Okay, so I've been fairly industrious and gone all the way down there. Um, and I just need to finish this one off with the last little bit, which is to get it a mirror image of the other side. So we'll just quickly do that. And then we will be there. So just doing the two wraps round and then the last four wraps on the bottom. And that mm -hmm. will give me the mirror image of my other one, other side where okay. I started. So I end up with a piece of wire work that looks like that. And that's quite nice because it catches the light beautifully. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the little flourishes um, that go underneath it. Okay, so just before yeah. you get your flourish on, yeah. I'm going to have to bring you something else purely because I have got like three of this kit left. Um, but once you lot check out, so I am going to have to take that off. Um, so sorry if, if anyone wanted it and is missing out on it, just try and check out now, see if you can get it um, at that price point. It's astonishing. But obviously, we are a shopping channel. We have to have graphics on our screen. So it's better to interrupt now whilst it's a natural stopping point. Um, I have got an alternate colourway for the gemstones for you now. So no cabs, no extra cabs, but the gemstones. Which ones do you want to do, Liam? Okay. I've got two alternate colourways for you. Um, both of them kind of in the grey palette. Ooh. This one is with a bit of pink and the next one's with a little bit of clear colour. Like this those. is your moonstone and your rose quartz. Look at the quality of that moonstone. <laughs> that is like really astonishing, isn't it? Because with grey moonstone, you know, sometimes, thank you for my bruise and my water, Pete. Um, <laughs> you know, with grey moonstone, sometimes it's kind of the cloudy grey. This isn't, is it? This is deep as you like, grey. Oh, that is so, so beautiful. 55 carats worth of your grey. This is your plain wheels, 4 by one to 7 by 2 mil on those. That quality is really amazing, isn't it? It's like storm clouds with lightning coming through. It's just amazing. So right. And then look at these rose quartz instead. So maybe you didn't get the kit, but you do want the gemstones. Maybe you got the kit with the gemstones, but you're thinking of doing something different with them. And actually, you want to add a little bit of, of a different colour palette to your collection. Then you can. Uh, this is your rose quartz, 90 carats worth here. These are the plain rondelles, all the way up to 11 by 5 on these. Let me show you them together so you can get a real good feel of how beautiful they are. Both of them really high quality. Unusual that we see rose quartz with this much clarity. A lot of the time recently it's been quite opaque, hasn't it? And you've not been able to see any of that brilliance. But look at the glow in this. That's quality. Um, this is your festive treats. Your price point for both. 
It's just £11.95 for you today. Get your hands on it. You can see the quality of that moonstone and you can see the quality of that rose quartz as well. To have that much clarity on rose quartz is absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, a lot of the time it does have that sort of silk-like inclusion within it. So you don't really get any of the life of the gem. With this, you've got plenty of that life. You've got that glow internally because of the clarity on these. The quality of both is astonishing. 11.95, congratulations to everyone getting your hands on that. That's such a classic color combination, the gray and the, the, gray and the pink together. Can't yeah. go wrong with that. No, you Beautiful. can't. Right. Wait, the flourish now. The flourish, we're ready for that. So naturally you'll have a place where your braid or your wrapping of your wire is longer than uh, the other one where yeah. you've been wrapping the three. And all I did was take that wire and just um, bend it where the shorter version, shorter wires wraps were. So I literally used the wrapping as that point to tell me where to bend them. Okay. And so I bent two up, the two shorter sides, and the ones with the longer wrap, I bent in the opposite direction. So now we look like we've got a strange insect. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where the people will go, oh, don't know how to finish it off, don't know what to do with my wire work. And it, that's the, the bit, you, you kind of often need your hand holding through a few times, but honestly, just push through it. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the two inside wires to the same length. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually, I'm going to spiral those into the middle. And I want them to be about an inch. And use if you've got flush cutters, use flush cutters, especially on a one mil wire because it just makes life a lot easier. Yeah. And then I'm just going to do these ones on the other side, a tiny little bit smaller. Okay. And you don't need to get the measuring tape out, just do it by eye. And you'll know roughly that they're about the same. Okay. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spiral, and I always find it's easier for me to spiral away from myself than it is towards myself. And that's just a natural way. You'll find you have a natural way which works better for you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people struggle when making spirals to get them round. Yeah. Um, and so what you're going to do is take your round nose pliers and you're going to, whoops, get it right at the end of that wire. I want to catch it right at the end. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to make that circle all the way around and I'm going to keep going. So if okay. I hold that up, can you see I've gone round on myself? Yeah, I see. I haven't stopped as soon as that wire got to the other one. I haven't You've stopped, I've carried going. on. And that, because you can see the centre of that spiral already is very circular because of doing that. If I'd stopped, I probably would get a bit of an oval shape. Yeah. That's not really what we're looking for. I mean, you can, a lot of this is hidden underneath the cabochon anyway, so it's not too bad, but, okay. you know. I still like what's underneath my work to be just as nice as what's on top. Absolutely true. And then what I'm going to do with the smaller one is I'm going to spiral that in the same direction. And what I want to do, can you see I've got a little space just there. And I want yeah. to get that spiral in there. Okay. If I can. Yeah. Um, we'll have a go. <laughs> I have faith. And I want this to be the tiniest centre of the spiral I can make it. So I've gone right to the tip of my round nose pliers. So that's going to do that on one side. And then on the other side, I'm going to do exactly the same on this side, on the mirror image. So on this side, I've got my little wire left. And I can get rid of that now, because it's done its work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use him for anything. And what I would do is make sure you always run your pliers over those little edges of wire. Laura Binding taught me that bit. Little squidge. Little squidge. <laughs> little squidge. Yeah. I've always wondered how to get rid of the sharp edges. And then I watch Laura and go, oh, that makes so much get sense. Get yeah. <laughs> And this one I'm going to do a little bit bigger spiral. So I want about an inch, inch and a half. Okay. Depends how, how you want it to look. This is what's going to hold the chain on it as well. Uh, I'm just going to, this one's going to be a little bit more open. But again, I've gone all the way around. And I use my pliers as much as I can. You can actually get your fingers in there with a one mil wire. It will allow you to spiral that back there. That. So I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So you don't need to really see me do that. And again, I'm going to get rid of that little tail. Let me give it a squidge. Like that. So I can get rid of all of those. So that's the sort of flourish I'm looking for. I see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my cabochon on top of there. Okay. 
So is this with the tail? Yeah, with the tail. But what I did is I didn't want it quite so flat. Yeah. I don't know why, I just sort of wanted it a bit bent. So mm -hmm. all I did was just get hold of both ends and just gently twist Good. it. Okay. I don't know why I wanted it like that, but that was the mood I was in. Yeah, why not? <laughs> if you, you know, if you want to make lots of these like that, you can actually make a whole links of a bracelet around your wrist actually just made from these little Cute idea. if you make them slightly smaller and you can actually just link the two ends together with jump rings, jump rings and keep going and keep nice. going makes a really nice sort of gate style do you remember those gate style bracelets They're i all know the exactly trend what you at mean. one point all the way yes so i've turned my cabochon over and i've trapped the long tail that i was working with underneath the bar that we've just wrapped and i take it over the top and almost so this back in Again, you don't need to worry because the wire is the same colour, you will get a really neat sort of organic finish. Because you've got crochet on the other side. Mm. To me, it's almost like you, it, you get that crochet sort of style coming through on this side as well. Yeah. And so you're just going to literally carry on sewing that through and you'll end up Until it's held. with your component like that. Oh, fab. And then you can just, I, I was going to attach it to my chain like that mm. and have it sitting as is sort of width ways yeah but then I saw it just sort of tipped it upside down and that just sort of made me feel that I wanted it to look like that you could do both yeah fab multi -use. that's how we do that one that is so wonderful I've got your um what are we looking at next we've got probably about 15 ish minutes there. you know this is a really really quite a quick demo which one is it it's the little charite the little charite oh yeah. so so cute and for a lot of people something as small as that would be a bit of a challenge to wrap. Um, I didn't find it a challenge to wrap at all because That's I good. used a special tool. Oh, special tool. Oh, you jig. My jig. You got jiggy with it. Do you know, this was the first thing that got me into wire work. So if you're the sort of person out there that doesn't like freeform, not quite into that, doing a whole freeform style and just wrapping wire and you want something with a little bit more structure, highly recommend a wire jig whether it be the we have two types that you can get this this one's the metal version and you can get a plastic version i know jewelry maker have done both in the past and um they're, they're they're brilliant tools and all it is is a series of holes that you can put pegs in the pegs come in different styles they come in um sort of these smaller pegs you get some with a slightly thicker uh, diameter and then you get some round ones which are great for making clasps and things i know sammy made um, a free form wire clasp this morning but if you if you're not quite happy to do free form you can put your pegs on here and just run your wire around and get those beautiful um, always perfect mm, fab pieces that's the thing uh, it, we haven't actually got any of these in stock at the moment i'm afraid to say Ooh. but hopefully we will the kit has gone back up uh, once you all check out you, we will have three left once everybody checks out um you get all of those cabs, you get those two strands, the Anderson, you get uh, those three reels, 400 metres worth, you get um, you get so, so much in there. If you want it, please do just check out because I don't want you to miss out, it's 24 mm. I do have the alternate colourway coming up for you in a little bit as well, uh, which is your white moonstone and your lab, that's coming up for you in a bit. Okay. So what I've done is I've set my pegs on my board and I've set them um, two pegs apart height wise and alternating um, in rows so I'm forming almost a, a W or an M shape with my pegs got you and then I'm going to take my wire and it's going to come around the first peg and up between the second just and follow it sort of up and down the pegs okay and what you want to do is you kind of want to over exaggerate the move so when you come round keep pulling round that corner and over exaggerate and then come back up and I've only got five pegs in here but what I can do is be very sneaky and just move my work along clever because I couldn't find the rest of my pegs last the, the other day when I was doing this <laughs> so just keep moving until you've got I think I did it one more so I had five yeah um, sort of u-shapes on each side I get you <laughs> like that. So I've got five on each side so if I put that down can you see I've got five oh, hold that up there five U shapes on each side of my wire and that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to almost form a prong set 
And the great thing about the wire jig is it's got a good sharp edge on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wire jig to bend this wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on the edge of my jig, like that. And then I'm just going to bend the ends over the edge. And because I'm using the super soft wire, it just bends very, very, very easily. So can you see I've just literally bent those over the edge. Got you. And if you wanted to, I mean, you could hammer the top of it just to work hard on it. But I didn't, didn't need to, really. Okay. So now I've got this little strange wire, sort of, I don't know, a bit like a centipede. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, sure. Yeah, it's got lots of feet. <laughs> You're amazed what you see in jewellery when you're making jewellery. You find all sorts of things. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to wrap it around my little cabochon. Yeah. So if you can see, I'll just wrap that over the top. Like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that back in there and I'm going to bring the two ends of the wire at the back, and this is the fiddly bit, you kind of need to hold it in place and get these ends of the wire to be where you want them to be, to be able to just wrap around each other. I might do it, just to get the first wrap in there without the cabochon in there. Okay. Just make, make my life a bit easier, there we go. Squidging it into place. I'm squidging it into place, front and back, yep. squidging, squidging. And then I'm just going to twist these two wires at the top just to anchor that in place, like that. So I've got my cabochon anchored at the front, but at the back I need to bring the wires together because otherwise, if you caught this or anything like that, it, it would pull. Mm -hmm. um, it would hold its shape now. I would be fine, but if you were to catch it on anything, or you know, I, don't, I like my jewelry to be one hundred percent secure. Yeah. Um, and at the back, all I've done is I've pushed all of the um, longer Teeth prongs in. together, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to take the tail of one of the wires that I've just wrapped through and anchor it, and then go through the other ones and anchor it. Got you. Yeah. And that's pulled that together. I then brought my wires back to the top. And what I did to form the bail was I just twisted them together. Now when people twist wires, they quite often twist one around the other. And that means that one of your wires will shorten at a quicker rate than the other. Mm -hmm. If you keep them in a V shape like that, yeah. and put your finger in the middle and then twist it, both wires will equally twist around each other and it forms a a neater twisted pattern yeah and b both your wires will stay the same length as you're twisting them along like that and then what i did just bring that back down with my round nose pliers which have gone into hiding there they are <laughs> I'm glad my workspace here is just as messy as my workspace at home. It's creative, Tell me about it. creative mess. Creative mess, organised chaos. That's it. And because that spiral is coming from the back of my pendant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push around to the front so that those wires are coming either side. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take them either side to the back and wrap them around. That will anchor those in place. Okay. And then I thought, mm, I need something on the back in case it turns round. I wasn't happy with the finish of the back, although it's not it's messy, all right. No. But I wasn't happy. Um, so what I can do is I can cut off one of these tails because it's finished and done its job. Um, and with wire work, if you're ever in any doubt, don't cut the tails off okay. until you're happy that the piece of work's going in the direction you want. So leave all those little pieces of tails and things, and you might find that they end up being a spiral if something possibly goes wrong, you might want to hide, or just something else okay. you might want to do. And all I did was cut it to about an inch and a half and create a little spiral on the back. And then this was ready to go onto um, a neckline piece. But I didn't want to just sort of put it onto any style neckline piece. I wanted to make sure that I could interchange it. 
I see. So I've used one of the S clasps to be able to interchange the pendant onto anything that I have in my wardrobe. So because it's such a beautiful, rare pendant. Well, yeah, absolutely. Rare gemstone. Rare gemstone. Yeah, so I wanted to be able to say, right, I'm wearing it with the sari thread today, but I want to put it on a chain tomorrow. I, I want to put it on a Viking yeah. knit piece. Clever. Whatever. Clever, interchangeable piece. Yeah, I so love that. very, very easy. So those little ones, you can do this, and you've got, I thought it was really sweet that you had two cabochons that were the same size, but in different gemstones. Different stones. gems, yeah. And I was thinking, what about a pair of gentlemen's cufflinks and have one and just have the different colours, one on each side. I just think that's quite yeah, sweet. That's a really <laughs> nice idea, because don't forget we had the Sharai and we had the Malachi yeah. that were in the same sizes. Is these and they are ring size, aren't they? They are. You could do this kind of style as a ring, couldn't you? Do you know Sammy did a ring? It was like a serpent's head ring mm. with a small moonstone cabochon, I think it was, uh, with a Viking knit setting. And I was thinking you could do do the setting, but do it so that it was an adjustable ring and had one coming round one side and one coming in the opposite direction. So both of those two cabochons actually sat on the same finger as a ring, but one on each side. So it was like a double-headed snake. Snake. I know. I like that. I know. I don't normally like snakes, but when they're in jewellery, they're fine. Well, they're fine, aren't they? <laughs> um, just going to reiterate exactly what we're getting in this kit very quickly, because I, I can't actually, I genuinely actually can't believe we've got any left. I'll be honest with you. I, I really, really, I'm absolutely blown away. Um, my own producer's just gone. It's because people aren't checking out in a very kind of teacher-esque voice. Um, you've got your 0 0.4, 10 metres. You've got your new uh, soft core wire in the 0 0.6. You've got all of these cabs. You've got two of your beautiful malachite. You've got the Sharite. Uh, you've got your, um, blah, 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 what am I thinking of? Aventurine, uh, you add your red agate as well. Um, you've got your clear quartz in here in your plain rondelles. You have, hello, treasure, yeah, and a scene. And you also have andalusite, sorry, and you also have uh, three of your Zari threads as well. So all of those coming at you today for just twenty four ninety five is absolutely phenomenal uh congratulations to everyone who's already got it we had over 100 people already purchased this so congratulations to all 100 of you uh, and fingers crossed to the rest of you who want it as well <laughs> if you're watching back at night do always give it a try because if people aren't checking out then there might be a couple left and um, i'm going to bring you an alternate colorway mm. now as we talk about the gemstones and uh, these are your gorgeous moonstone and your really high quality Labradorite. That's amazing. That's fab, isn't it? That is just even in here going for it. Yeah. <laughs> going for it. I like that. <laughs> um, have a look at these. So this is an alternate colourway. So as opposed to the clear quartz, if you want a little bit of interest with Schiller, then you can have it with your white moonstone. Um, oh, 55 carats worth here. Uh, this is your graduated wheels from 3 by one to 6 by one that we have on this. So beautiful, isn't it? Of that quality, can you see the Schiller and the Sheen? You can a bit, can't you? Um, and then let's have a look at the Labradorite as well, shall we? You'll be able to see the quality of this, I'm almost sure, even under these horrendous lights. Yeah. Yeah, you can, can't you? You can see some of it, can't you? Some of it, I won't lie, you can't see all of the Labradorescence that's actually spanning across this, you're not. You're not seeing all of it. But you're seeing a lot more than you usually would, which goes to show you the quality of this. Golds, blues, oh, just greens. Unusual, isn't it? Greens. Mm, really unusual. unusual. All the way across as well. It's not just on the bigger ones. Look. Right there at the end. Lows. Uh, oh, I quite like that. Uh, you've got 85 carats worth of that. Amazing quality. Just one of those in a ring. Oh, I'm in love. Um, these are your plain rondelles, five by three mil they start off and they go all the way up to nine by three mil. Both of these together could act as an alternate colourway for you if you so wished. If you wanted to add a little bit of shiller, a little bit of under the surface interest, then these could be the two for you, especially at the price point. Both strands are just 9.95. Can you get over that? Both strands, for the quality, of that Labradorite. I, 
alone. I'd pay that for just that one strand. Absolutely. I'd be buying loads of those because it's just got so much going for it. And also, let's face it, Labradorite and Moonstone are such interesting gems mm -hmm. that they kind of don't go out of fashion because they're always so interesting. That's and right. Fleur always says that this is the gemstone that whenever she's got a commission, she has a lot of commission pieces, whenever she gives people, um, you know, choice of gemstones that they want in their pieces, this one is chosen time and time and time and time again. Yeah. Because people don't know about it that much, do they? They don't. Um, and it's one of those ones that people are always amazed when they pick it up and they move it and they see that coming from it. They're always amazed that that is natural. Yeah, totally. And I just think, you know, if you can just have even if one piece of Labradorite on your stall to get people talking and just come and have a look at it. Yeah. Yeah, to get people interested. I've got one piece that I always take with me. It's quite a large oval uh, pendant, mm. and I always take it with me. Although I would never sell the piece, I always take it with me as a talking point. For people to have a look at. Yeah. yeah. It's fab. 9.95 for both of them. Congratulations to all of you. Um, lots of you coming in for this. Uh, check out your baskets whenever you get the opportunity to. Lovely jubbly. Yes. So we're back to you. Okay. Well, I just thought I'd show, um, seeing as how we've done some crochet to do the setting, um, a lot of people ask me how to get the beads into the crochet. And I didn't want to do all crochet together with the pendant, yeah. but I've done a little piece underneath that Viking uh, knit pendant, which is this one here. Yeah. Um, and so I've done a little bit of... of beaded crochet with the clear quartz on there. I just think it adds just that little bit of sparkle when you're wearing that, it's just going to catch the really light, especially if it was over a black um, top. Yeah. You really see that. Fab, let's have a look at how okay. that one. So it's the same as um, we did for starting off our crochet before, so we did our slip knot, but before we start, you always, if you're doing beaded crochet, you must add your beads on this before you start so I always say add more beads because you never know how long things are going to be and if you're doing a piece like I did there I actually made three identical and braided them together okay so um, you know this piece I'm wearing um, on my neckline again it's a crochet but it's on the beading thread um, and this was just using some leftover beads that I happen to have mm in my beading box and I just literally picked all the random beads that were the same sort of colour tones and just mm. went for it. Yeah. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to chain as normal um, to start off with and I always make a good length of chain to start off with because if you're making this for a bracelet you, you wouldn't want beads around the back of your, your wrist because that's mm. going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, of course. Um, and again um, on a neckline piece it's quite nice just to have the plain crochet around the back of the neck as well. Yeah. So when you want to add a bead, you've got your um, loop on your hook as normal. You drop the bead down and then you ignore it. And it might want to pop around the hook like that one did. Make sure it just stays at the back of the hook and chain as normal. Mm -hmm. And now that bead is trapped. It can't go anywhere. It's locked in there yep. and that's it forever. Um, and I did a chain, a plain chain between and dropped a bead in. and did my chain as normal and again if it gets too t too small to get the hook through just take it up and there we go it'll go straight through now when you are crocheting with wire it does take a while to get used to doing it so be patient you're not going to if you are a crochet and you crochet with yarn and thread it's a different feel it's not going to go at the same speed it's not going because thread and yarn of course is very fluid and it goes exactly where you want to and you may find you have to play around getting your tensions right mm. and things like that so that's just as simple as it is to do and you could go back and do that in the opposite direction and add gemstones in when you're doing your singles as well a very very simple technique easy peasy lemon squeezy simple as that um, you have created so many with this beautiful kit with lots and lots of different designs thank you so much for showing us all of those <laughs> I especially it. the crochet bit because it's my new favorite thing Do you know I shocked myself with the the pendant I've made with the malachite I am absolutely your wire work I'm actually shocked myself that I managed to make that because <laughs> we know that you're not inherently a wire worker but you couldn't tell from this piece um, it was one of those ones it just evolved as it went on and that's a tension set piece so it's actually all held in there with the wire there's nothing else apart from the tension and wire holding the piece so, so I was just shocked that I actually managed to make it and I said to my husband 
play that. And he's like, well, that's nice. And he never says anything about my jewellery. So there you go. <laughs> it is a beautiful piece. Thank you. Uh, what are we expecting from your second designer inspiration, lovely lady? I'm going to um, be showing you how to incorporate two different types of Kamihimo to set a cabbage on. Um, and if we get time, we might be able to talk through maybe the macrame piece as well that's about there as well. So hopefully we'll get a chance to see, have a look at both of them. But. And we will have the Humihimo boards for you, the square and the circular, they are back by wow. popular demand. Uh, so they will be back with you in a, a wee while. After the break, what for coming up, Liam? Oh my goodness. Um, brand new head pins. My, one of my favourite gemstones in the world. I gave you a little sneaky peek of it later on. I've told you it's going to be under £80. I will not let you down. It is the most stunning, breathtaking quality of the one locational wonder that is Imperial Topaz. So stay where you are. It's not to be missed. <laughs> Owning a strand of genuine gemstones is always exciting, but being able to use it in your handcrafted jewellery, then passing it on to its new owner with proof of its authenticity is even more incredible. Why not add one of our printed authenticity cards to your order for just 50p and share that same feeling with your customers? You can also access online authenticity certificates for items you have previously ordered by looking at your order history on your account details. The certificate gives you valuable information about your purchase and is your guarantee of quality and peace of mind from the Genuine Gemstone Company. When shopping with Jewellery Maker, you can add as many items to your order in one day and only pay one postage and packaging charge. We have two delivery options. Standard delivery at just £2.95 and you'll receive your parcel within four to six days or opt for our premium delivery at just 4 95 and you'll receive your parcel within three to four days. Happy shopping with Jewellery Maker. The fastest way to shop with Jewellery Maker is by going to our website. Just click on the sign up button. Once you've filled in the required details, you can start shopping. You can watch the show by clicking the watch live button on the front page. You can also use our refine tool and narrow down your search. Once you've found an item that you like, just simply click on the Buy Now button and the item will be added to your basket. Don't forget you can add as many items to your basket per day and still only pay one p and Enjoy shopping with Jewellery Maker. We all know that you need the right tools for the job. So here at Jewellery Maker, we have developed our very own tool set just for you. In this larger set, we have provided more tools to help you develop your jewellery making skills even further. The kit includes wire cutters, a bead reamer with replacement tips, an awl, tweezers with a scoop, a sliding gauge, a snip, and all the essential pliers you will need. All of this is yours for just £15.95, neatly presented in a carrying case with an embossed Jewellery Maker logo. Stay tuned for more advice, tutorials and demonstrations of jewellery making. We provide the tools, you provide the skill. Welcome back everybody to Designer Inspiration. My name is Rebecca Reddiken and in front of me I have one of my favourite gemstones in the world. Um, it's my favourite for so many reasons. Um, possibly a little bit because I know it's one locational and that to me makes it more special. Possibly because of the pedigree of the tone that you get running through here, these sherries, these golden tones that are so spectacular. Personally, this is a very personal thing to me, um, 
I'm not particularly a big fan of the bright orange stones, personally, that's just me. But this isn't that. This isn't a brash, burnt tone. This is that most exquisite of golden gems. It's almost got that kind of um, Songean toning to it. It's almost got the um, the the yellow diamond colouring to it, and it's it's such a beautiful gold. Is the only way I can describe it. You can see the quality of this Imperial Topaz. Now, I've promised you it will be under £80. You know I will not be letting you down on that. Um, we need to highlight a few things about this gemstone. First off, if I may, I want to talk to you about the location of this gem and the mining process of this gem also. And... Um, it's something that's really important to me. I know whenever I talk about this, I will often refer back now and again to the mining process. Um, but it can be quite hard for you to fit, obviously, into sort of a four minute section um, that we kind of generally have here to do each one. It's quite hard to kind of get across to you exactly how intense that is. So I actually had a little look around and I had a little look in our archives and kind of the reading material that we have here. And I summarized it for you um, but with a piece that was written um, by Matt Bennett. So, um, Matt Bennett, first off, let me tell you who Matt Bennett is. Um, first off, he is um, he's Steve Bennett's son, so Steve Bennett being the CEO. Now, Matt Bennett is, is a manager here. He, he works a lot with some of our sister channels. He's also a presenter here. He does go and source a lot of the gemstones, and he visits a lot of the mines. And uh, this piece that I found for you, I'll read it out for you in a moment, this piece that I found for you is essentially him discussing um, an occasion whereby his dad was invited to a mine, but he was unable to attend so Matt went in his place um, so this is him talking about this wonderful wonderful gemstone I'll just pick out a few of the main points for you he says that without doubt Imperial Topaz is one of the rarest gemstones on the planet which is is very big statement to make but absolutely and honestly completely true he says Mining from the rough materials is made very difficult in the fact that the area sits on a high water table. The mine owner explained that when um, that what looked like a normal lake, which you can see a picture of in the bottom corner there, to, uh, normal lake to us was in fact an open pit mine a mere eight months ago. Uh, that meant uh, uh, that meant that a 40 meter deep lake has formed um, over the top of, of this huge mine. So that pit that you can see there, that, that huge lake is actually an, a mine which is 40 metres deep. He says the scarcity of the gemstone is evident from the size of the mine, considering this is the only area of the world where you can source imperial topaz. The fact that only three miners are digging at any one time shows the difficulty of sourcing this gem. So not only have you got to struggle with the fact that, you know, for months and months of the year, it's absolutely filled with water. It's got this huge water, you can't even get to it. But even when you have spent all that time, money and effort getting out the water, only three miners are able to be in there at one time. So that goes to show you. And if we have a little look at that one again, just to summarize for you. Um, so he's, he's talking to you all about this. He then says at the bottom of this that Imperial Topaz is unique in that its colour is totally natural. For those who love watching an evening sunset, there is nothing that quite competes with the colour of Imperial Topaz. And I have to say I completely enjoy, uh, completely agree with that. He also says in that piece that seeing, bearing in mind this is Matt Bennett and he has been to so many mining locations around the world, he actually says that on that piece, seeing how much work and effort, time and money goes um, into unearthing just a handful of pieces each day, he's found himself falling in love with yet another gemstone, which is a big statement from him because he's been to pretty much all of the main mining locations in the world. This gemstone is exquisite in any form but for me personally I can honestly say this is one of the most eye-catching strands I've seen it has got that pedigree tone running through it and one thing I do want to point out is the carat weight of this is phenomenal phenomenal in the gemstone world for pieces found 
individual pieces found, the average piece of this that we will find is 0.16 of a carat. So it's not even half a carat, it's 0.16 of a carat that we will find around that, which is astonishing. When you think that we can actually find even morganite in bigger pieces, can't we? Even when you think you can find pieces of quartz that can be, you know, 600 carat slabs, the average that you find of this is 0.16 of a carat. The fact that you've got 40 carats worth on this strand goes to show this will have this this strand will have taken days and days and days and days to have been found by just three miners. 40 carats worth we have here. I think it's absolutely exquisite. I told you it was going to be under 80 pounds, and I, I haven't let you down. Your price point today: 44 pounds and 95 pence for you today. Okay. Just bear those things in mind. You can't get it most of the year. When you can get it, only three miners are able to be in that pit at one time, that's it. The, when you are not able to get it because of the water table, they have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds with this huge equipment to try and get it out of the mine, to try and get all that water out so they can go back and mine. This is an individual, a unique gemstone but you know that it's one of my favourites. It's my top three. It goes opal, zircon, and this one. And to be honest, this could outdo some of the opal that I've seen. Like, I love it that much. And what happens when I am passionate about a gemstone this much? Well, I'm going to try and get you the best price I possibly can, can't, aren't I? Because I want you, I genuinely want you to own this because I need you guys at home to fall in love with it as much as I do. Just because it's like with anything, isn't it? If you adore something and you really, you know, it's like a hobby. If you've started a hobby and you love it, you'll probably tell some of your friends and you want them to have a go. It's like that. That's how I feel about this gemstone. I want you, my jewellery maker family, to get involved and to love this so much. So I am actually going to drop the price. <sighs> you haven't seen this. 44.95 so it should be nearly 90 uh, 45 pounds which is a bargain i've taken a whole 10 pounds note off that for you i need you to get this i want you to appreciate this especially when it's this quality especially when it's this much of a beautiful beautiful golden gem it is exceptional get it home to appreciate it get it outside see this uh, in candlelight and honestly you'll be blown away and you will be buying imperial topaz time and time and time again you really will in your desk light it is just it just comes lies it just pops in every single form that you can see this you're gonna get something new and exciting we've taken 10 pounds off it what do you think of this there Alvin beautiful isn't it isn't it so so warm and happy it's almost got all the tones of honey running through it and it's just oh, I just would love that just rowed up just two rows I think with with a row of, of sort of butterscotch pearls in the middle. Oh, love that idea. Yeah, really very, very simple, very, very classic, but just think with the pearls in the middle, it's just going to have all that warmth and light coming through it, and it's just going to be <gasps> delightful. Delightful. I love that. There's lots of you with it in your baskets. Do check out. Congratulations to everyone who's got that. You're going to fall in love. You are, I'm pretty sure. And new head pins are we doing now? Ooh. Now, you may well have got these head pins um, as part of a bundle this morning, but they were in the silver colour. We're going to bring to you one of the most popular colours now. It's your rose gold. And these are your cushion shapes. So they've got the square, but they are cushioned. Can you see they're slightly domed if I hold them up? They've got that cushion shape design to them. Now this morning they were on and you got them in a bundle. There was a, there was a hundred of this shape, a hundred of a heart shape, and a hundred of something else. Um, we're bringing them to you by themselves though on this brand spanking new product. So if you just want these, now's your time to get them. They are in such a popular, popular color with that rose gold. It's one of the most popular colors of your metals. And um, you've got a hundred of these and they have that beautiful kind of cushion shaped domed detail to them which just isn't that really interesting play of the light because with the with your squares that we get sometimes in the findings kit that are the flat ones you get to get one hit of color one hit of light don't you but these ones the light kind of spans around them 
What do you think of doing with these to really kind of show off that detail? Well, I can see Debbie Bulford setting these into polymer clay and yeah. having them as little details, stud details into a piece that she, you know, of, of her fantastic sort of um, pieces of, of clay. I think mm. they're just going to look amazing. But I think you can you can twist them up and, and have them sitting on the top of a gemstone and uh, they're going to look really beautiful in pairs of earrings like that to have them sitting up but I think just you know with earrings it's nice to have that that dome at the bottom as well just of that beautiful light I'm um, I just wasn't using a pair of earrings on their own I'm just going to twist them and have them twisted kicked up so they just catch the light I love that idea I think they're beautiful. You could actually make them into shepherd's hooks couldn't you? You could um, and have them have them if I bent them so that that obviously this is a very crude manner in which doing it because I'm only doing it with my fingers but you could make yourself a shepherd's hook so that that was pinning at the front yeah. couldn't you like this yeah so that kind of be your shepherd's hook shape <laughs> obviously not made with tools I've just made it with my finger but so you've got that detail at the front and then you can hang gemstones from that yeah couldn't you or you could even if you wanted to almost make these into stud earrings and just have them straight into the of course you could because they've got that beautiful of effect could. genius Oh, he just went, ah, press the wrong button! It's £6.95 <laughs> pence for you today for all 100 of those rose gold, brand spanking new, 50 mil drop that we've got on there. So they're really, really workable, super duper long. When we talk about the 50 mil, we talk about this section here. Uh, so 50 mil drop on those, which means that you've got lots of chance to add spirals, swirls, little loops if you want to. Um, can I ask you, Sarah, why do you think rose gold is such a popular colour? I think it spans the sort of the traditional between silver and gold people. You know, if you typically were, if someone asked you if you like what sort of jewellery you like, they'd ask whether you like silver or gold jewellery. Yeah. That was typically a question you'd get asked if someone was going to buy you a piece of jewellery. And I think it sort of spans that gap in the middle. Yeah. It's such a rich tone that it, it suits every skin tone. I don't know anybody who can't wear this. Mm. It really does. And it's also, it, it can add you know you can add it with your vintage and sort of more um, antique copper and um, antique bronze type styles and it works beautifully with those tones um, but then you can add it with all of your sort of silver tones as well you can really mix and match it beautifully in and I just think it's it's a colour tone for everybody I don't think there's anybody there that you know if I showed them rose gold findings and said do you like these I have no one that said no yet no <laughs> no completely understand that so I think I think it's just it's got that warmth and I do like that with my jewellery to add a little bit of warmth in there that's fab isn't it they are absolutely lovely oh they're, they're definitely added straight into my stash yeah yeah and essential for the stash as well, especially at Definitely. this time of year, isn't it? Because we're making gifts for our loved ones, we're making gifts to sell, whatever it might be. Um, £6.95 for you. Congratulations. Brands back in new, loads of you multi buyers on them as well. What did you say then, producer Liam? We're going to do. Ooh. Have you seen this piece? It's by one of our budding beaders. It's by Sue. Hey, haven't they got that, uh, that budding beader on tonight? I'm sure they have. There was a lady um, when I was uh, buying a drink from the vending machine the other day, and there was a lady who went, oh, oh Becky, Becky, hi. Oh. And um, she introduced herself, and I can't for the life of me remember her name, because I'm horrendous with names. Um, and yeah, she said she was going to be on the Late Show. I'm sure it was tonight. I'm sure it was. This is a budding beater. She works here in the building. Um, so I'm sure she's on tonight, giving out the old guest designer thing ago. We'll see though, we'll see. This one's by Sue. Lovely Sue. Love Sue. She's always so smiley. Mm -hmm. um, and these are, I just love how she's used these nuggets to create kind of a bead bead shape because it's personally not something I would think of. I'd think of using these standardized shapes but she's changed her mind. I would do these. Oh look at that. Um, let me bring you these two strands shall I. It's called your Celtic Dragon. Oh why that Liam? Why'd you name it that? Because it's green and gold. Okay, I thought there'd be more thought in there, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is your Savorite Garnet. Can you believe that? Savorite Garnet you've got in here. I cannot remember the last time we have had Savorite Garnet on. Can anyone else? It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been ages. It's been ages. Absolutely ages. Um, Savarite Garnet, of course, has got this completely unique sort of green tone to it. I like it in these shards. Because, can you, can you see the one in the middle of the screen? It's almost got kind of a, um, 
I'm going to say Turkish Delight type sheen. You've got that on all of those. It's just that you managed to catch the light. It's fab, isn't it? 60 carats worth we have here from around 4 by 2 to 10 by 3 mil. And then, oh my goodness, this is one of my favourite strands. I love Pyrite anyway. I like, I like the luster that it gives you. But I love this one in particular because... The way it's been cut, we haven't actually cut it to facet it. We've had the section and we've cut it in areas so that you get a bit that's been faceted, but then you get a bit of the actual rough. So there's bits of this that haven't been faceted at all. Take a look. Let me show you. Examples. That's a perfect example there. So if you look at this, can you see those lines in this? That's that's the growth. That's the growth structure because pyrite grows in kind of spines. And then look, so from showing you the bottom, obviously we've cut it out here, but then look, you get the rough. Isn't that fab? That's like that on every single one. So you get a bit, you get a bit of everything. That one next to it's a really good example of it as well, actually, this one here. So can you see we've faceted it here? Facets, beautiful facets, really nicely done. But then look juxtaposition you get the natural rough of it as well isn't that really fab strand oh, i adore this oh yeah that's one for me to add um okay so you've got your savorite garnet and you've got your golden pyrite as well 135 carats worth of that pyrite uh you put oh, loads of you getting this today your price is just nine pounds and 95 pence for savorite garnet alone is a corker, isn't it? Yes. Both strands, yeah. 9.95, what do you think of that? That's amazing. Isn't it? It is really amazing value for money. Um, the garnet, I mean, it's one of my favorite tones of garnet, and I, I just, it's one of those really unusual ones, and when you say to people it's a garnet, they're just like, hmm, really? It's, uh, it's not red. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're right, yeah. Um, and it just works beautifully with it, with the red garnet. It works beautifully if you've got any of the, um, I've forgotten the name of it. The really golden garnet. I have s it gives it an S and I've forgotten the name. Oh, it's Specitite. Specitite garnet. Sorry, it works yeah. beautifully with that as yeah. well. I completely forgot the name of it. Yeah. Um, and it's just lovely to be able to have that such an unusual collection. And I just think they work beautifully together. And I think the beading buddies have done an amazing job with that piece. I it's know, so Sue's done a fab piece of this. So textural. Having yeah. and But it just shows that, you know, if you have um, some gemstones that are of an organic nature and not around, you can still treat them in the same way as you would around yes. gemstone and create a completely and utterly different feel with a piece of jewellery. Totally different, isn't it? It's totally lovely. different. Wow, I love loads of you, lots of multi buyers. Check out your baskets, everyone, as always. Uh, 9.95 for you. I personally would pay that just for one of these strands. 9.95 for both today, though. So congratulations, everyone. Anyone want some double drilled gemstones? Well, good, because that's what we've got here. Beautiful smoky quartz. I had some really nice smoky quartz on yesterday that was um, we gave to Linda as her challenge. And these would go really nicely, actually, because it's the same kind of smokiness that we've got to them. These are your double drilled gems. Now, if you are new to us and you're wondering what that means, it essentially means you have got two drill holes running through here. So often we'll just have the one drill hole running through the middle, won't we? But this one actually has two. Now that means you can create an array of shapes and looks with this very, very simply. Um, if you really simply kind of stranded um, a different length through each of these, you'd get this beautiful zigzag appeal. If you put different gemstones on it, you would also. Um, I know that Mark has got a DVD which is coming out on Christmas Day, and um, he's done quite a few designs with this. And all you have to do is memory wire through, and every kind of other gem just pop on another gemstone. It's beautiful. Um, really, really simple. Why do you like double drill gemstones, Sarah? Um, I love using them on my bead loom. They work beautifully on there. Um, they just create a completely and utterly different look. Um, I love the fact that they give you um, a little bit of versatility with the play of design because you've got those two drill holes running through them so you can choose to uh, do things like the wiggle weave if you want to where you use the smaller round gemstones. 
um, to create that sort of undulating effect with yeah. them. Um, but there's so much you can do, and it's just having that extra drill hole allows you, if you've got lots of seed beads, so the two mil beads, you can create really beautiful scallops around them. Um, there's lots and lots, and even if you're a wire worker, just having that extra anchoring point really helps as well. Yeah, it's handy. It is, it is handy, isn't it? At your price point today? £8.95 pence for you. Do not forget, because it is a double drill, you've got a, a serious length here. But don't forget, because it is double drilled, there's more work that has to go into it. Not just with actually creating the drill hole, but also there is more wastage to it. Because if you go slightly off kilter, slightly off angle with one of these, you can really, really tell because the other one has to be perfectly parallel to it. If you have a single drill hole, say on a round, you can go off at any old angle we want. It's not going to make a difference, is it? But these have to be parallel. So if you go slightly off kilter with one, it's ruined for the next one. The whole gemstone is wasted, uh, uh, pretty much. So 8 95 for this entire strand with the double drill. It's so multifunctional, so multi-use. Genuinely treat yourself to it. And it is, if you've not worked with a double drill hole before, you'll be amazed at how different it is and how many more pieces you can actually create and different looks that you can create. It really is something special. £8.95 for you today. Congratulations to you all who's getting your hands on that today. Not got many of these ones that are coming up for you. These delicate little flowers. Oh. Not got many of these, apparently, my producer's telling me. How many am I looking at about? Last Chance Saloon. I'm on Last Chance Saloon with this for you today. It is 300 carats worth of this white quartzite that I have. Can you see all the different banding on that? It's really pretty, isn't it? Um, you've got five petal flowers, 20 mil these ones are. Isn't it lovely to have a flower detail in your collection? It's nice to have pieces and shapes like this but I've got to say at this time of year when perhaps the flowers aren't actually out that much on most uh, trees it's nice isn't it to have the icicle coloured flowers to your designs isn't that pretty like Jack Frost Yay. Oh, I won't finish off that poem. Um, <laughs> uh, 300 carats worth of your white quartzite that we have here. 20 mil flowers. They're going out quickly. I've only got 16 left now at £6.95 for you. Congratulations to everyone getting your hands on that. They're working out pennies per one. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen, nine, twenty, twenty-one. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 I have on my strand. Obviously yours might be slightly more, might be slightly less, but it'll be uh, 300 carats you'll be getting. I've got 21 on my strand, so that's working out pennies, isn't it? How many specifically, Liam? Triple buyers. Yeah, 21 on the strand at 6.95. Triple buyers, multi buyers. 33 pence per one. 33p. Oh, Over each, off my stock's gone though. Each, each one a wire work ring. Each one. Each one a wire work ring, which minimum you'll sell for a fiver. Oh, easily. Minimum. Easily. Don't sell it for any less because you're doing yourself down. Yeah, because yeah. you know you've got to pay for your time in there as well. So don't forget, you know, to add that. And you know, even a pair of earrings, you know, might go. You're gone. Yeah, gone. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but you know, just it's it's you know just beautiful beautiful yeah. uh, that's a goner once you lot check out congratulations everyone I showed you this cord earlier on and I've got to say it's one of my favorite recent cords that we've have that we have had sorry and um, it is your beautiful jewel colored wax cotton cord so this is your red and black now it's 3.5 mil you get 10 meters worth I love it because look at that sheen that looks high-end already doesn't it I also love the fact that if you squidge it the other way it gives you that texture look at that isn't that beautiful it's, it is it's got a lovely tessellation if you hold it like that if you keep it in that way which I'm sure you'll be able to with some piece of wire we can use this in things like Kumihimo can't we you can um, especially if you do the four strand Kumihimo that's quite um, you know four strands of that together would be beautiful oh, yeah create you know um, especially if you, you know as somebody I was asking you know how to make lanyards out of Kumihimo so you know Good if you've got you. to wear a, a name badge you know that as long as you've got something on there that 
if it gets caught, it will it will break it will open. open yeah. um, but you can get special sort of lanyard clasps that will do that anyway. Yeah, you can. Um, it would, would be lovely. Nice for feminine, but also masculine pieces as well. Definitely, and really, really easy to work with, especially if you've got the um, Kumihimo ends. You can literally just put those straight on the end there, um, and you have a beautiful finish to your piece of jewellery. Or you can, you know, you can break it down and use your ribbon cord endings by taking the core out. It makes it small enough to be able to use your ribbon cord endings to fasten that. Um, you can take it apart if you want to as yeah. well and just use individual sections. Absolutely. They're wonderful. They're really, really great to work with. Um, your price point today is a bit wonderful too. 10 metres worth of all of this is just £7.95 for you today. KHPO57 for all of this. It's super high shine. In fact, if you've got that first kit, uh, sorry, Sarah's challenge, not only do these beads go through it easy peasily, hang on, where are they? Not only do these go through it easy peasily, loads of loads of um, pieces left over but also that gorgeous cord because that's so high shine mm. goes great as well doesn't it you could and you could you know use the um, smaller gauge to macrame around the larger gauge and add beads in that way because the smaller gauge will go through a lot more of your beads if you wanted to as well of course um, you know, and mix and match your, your cords together, as I said earlier, you know, it just gives a completely and utterly different look. Gives a total different look. Yeah. This uh, challenge is at the bottom of your screen right now. If you've just tuned in, just have a really quick look at it. Um, you've got the agate coins, you've got the black agate, and you've got that wax cord. You get 50 of these as well. So you've got loads and loads. That's at the bottom of your screen right now. Tiny price, just 13.95. So let's move on to designer inspiration. What are we expecting from this one? Um, lots and lots of different ways of being able to use our cabochons again. Completely yeah. and utterly different though this time. So uh, this one yeah. has got the bead scoops in as well. <gasps> How do you feel about your bead scoops? I love them. I, I, you know, I really think they push your creative boundaries. Um, and for someone who normally gets, you know, their beads on on a strand and they're all the same, and um, it's so nice. To be presented with beads that are, you know, maybe different shapes, different tones than you would normally use. Yeah, maybe not the ones you generally yeah. go for. And it really is, you know, just so creative and freeing almost just to work within the boundaries of the bead scoop itself. Um, and I just had a lot of fun with it. And I had so much left over. I mean, I had tons left over of the beads themselves, and I haven't been shy about using them. So they're just amazing. That's good. Mm. And actually, I'm just thinking of your necklace again. You could do that necklace with these. Definitely. Yeah, especially because you've got the two different sort of tones of scoops there. You could yeah. pick out all the blacks and do, you know, do it with some gold beading thread and use all the black beads. Or you might want to pick out the whites and use a brighter tone. Or, you know, even mix it up and, you know, go for sort of the pinks, the fuchsias and the oranges together. It's just really nice. I like that idea a lot. Um, lovely, lovely ladies and gentlemen, you're getting two bead scoops in here. So it's a filled little organza bag and we will, I can't say to you, oh, you'll definitely get two of these like I have. You'll definitely get ten of these. I was like, I can't say that. What I can say is you'll get a full selection that will fill your little organza bags. And I can also say that you'll get them in these colour palettes. So you will get the monochrome that we can obviously see over here and you will also get the red and orange lucky dip as well so have a look at some of the ones i've got in here what i will say about the the lucky dip the gemstone scoops that we do is don't think oh i bet i only get one of everything because you don't at all look at how many of the kind of um the leaf shapes that i get look at how many of these crackled quartz i'm getting i'm getting loads of pearls in my one here as well absolutely loads um so lots and lots going on in there and lots of rep repetition with a few kind of odds and ends in there too it's a great way to push yourself it's a great way for you to perhaps um explore new realms and explore new pieces that you wouldn't necessarily go for every single time it will pick yourself so beautiful selection there you've then got your memory wire selection too in the small medium and large the small 14 loops great for rings but not exclusively just for rings you've then got your bracelet and then you have got your 
necklace or large length. That's got 10 loops on there. Really simple to use, isn't it, um, Sarah? incredibly easy to use. You can make talk style necklaces without even having to add a clasp on to them. Very, very simple. Um, and it's probably a place where a lot of sort of beginner jewellery makers start off because all you need is is a pair of pliers and you know an appropriate pair of cutters. Don't use your flush cutters on memory wire please. Um, no, don't. But you know it just really is very, very simple. Yes, absolutely simple to do isn't yeah. it? Uh, so you've got loads of loops there all in the silver tone. I've then got lots of your cords for you. So we've got some satin cords, your black and your white and you've got your hemp cord as well. Now talk to me about the hemp cord. What kind of look does this give us as opposed to the satin cord? It gives you a very sort of earthy feel, a very sort of matte look. It's very masculine, um, but I actually like it for doing a lot of my wakrami pieces because it holds the knots incredibly well. Um, and you know, you get so much on that. And because it's a 0.5, yeah. it goes through a lot of your beads. So you'll get through a lot, you know, be able to put your beads onto your macrame pieces or to your um, kumihimo pieces actually straight onto the cords. Absolutely straight onto there. Yeah. Really useful, isn't it? Uh, the amount you'll be getting, how many? Do, how much do you get, Liam, of the hemp cord, sweet pea? You get nine metres worth on each of these spools and it's 0.5 mil so you get plenty and plenty on there uh, and that gorgeous satin cord as well. Now the cabs, now I went a bit Coco Loco on some of these cabs because genuinely I'm just blown away by some of them. Um, first off my birthstone which obviously I'm going to love but I just I love the quality of it. Look at the clarity on that, you even see that span of light working around here and gone. Come here, you. Look at that. Oh, clarity is exceptional, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Um, the amethyst that we have here is your lavender, and it is 40 by 30 mil, about 40 carats worth there. You've then got your unikite. Unikite's an interesting one. It's made up of, of kind of three elements, as it were. So you've got your quartz in there, which kind of gives you the boldness, the strength. Um, but then you've got your pink feldspar, which is the pink sections. And then, so th this is your pink feldspar here, obviously, the ones that we can see. And then you also have your green epido. So it's a mixture of three really well-known gems, I suppose, in, in, in one. It's kind of a triple threat, really, isn't it? triple threat very very much uh, so you get the pink folds bar you've got the quartz and you've got that gorgeous green epido in there as well every single one just going of course is going to be unique but you will get the same sizes and um, again let me just point that out these ones won't be done on caraway i know we've been doing that quite a lot recently with the calves you'll get oh you'll get around this amount but there could be different shape sizes all of these will be oval all of these will be 40 by 30 mil and you'll get the same the same type this lapis is unlike anything I have ever seen. Oh, you can't see what I can see. Can you see the lines on this? Can you? Can you see that? Can you see the lines of those inclusions? Isn't that colour astonishing? And one thing I would say is, when you get large pieces of your lapis like this, you'll be able to see what you can see in really high-end lapis, which is pink hues, which sounds really strange, but it's these pink hues. Yeah, honestly, get it home. You mm -hmm. see pink in large pieces of lapis, don't you? You do. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like, it's absolutely amazing. I was, it's almost a sheen. I was drawn into mine. It was almost yeah. like a starry night sky, and I was just literally drawn into the gemstone. And it was almost like, you know, hang on a minute, put the gemstone down. You've got to make some jewellery for it first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Look at that. I know. Oh, my days, I love it. Um, and just to let you know as well, lapis, when you get it in your cab form, um, because we made it into a cab, we look for really high quality, so that's meant you can see high quality lapis because all those gorgeous kind of inclusions are nicely evenly spaced, like you see in this, so you'll get something like that too. This is the one I went Coco Loco on. This is the one I kind of shoved in Liam's face and was like, Liam, hey, have you ever seen anything like this? Well, I whispered it because Carol was working, so I was whispering it. This ladies and gentlemen i hope you can get this and i don't know if you'll be able to because i've never shown you a piece of bronzite as large as this before but it is 
mesmerizing. Oh, it's kind of hard for you to see, but it's got this oh, almost shiller, almost sheen. Um, you have got just, if I could kind of turn it, you should be able to see that you have the surface of the gem, but then the light plays underneath it and hits those kind of undulating sections of that submetallic. It is almost like a gold leaf, you're right, almost. What do you think of uh, the bronzite, Sarah? Did you love it? Oh, absolutely. Just, I didn't want to use it. I wanted to keep it. <laughs> you wanted to keep <laughs> <I did>. it. <laughs> it was one of those gems where you just want to think, right, I'll squirrel that away and kind of just supplement it for another one. But it's just beautiful. It's astonishing, isn't it? Oh, amazing. I absolutely. love it. Yeah. Um, so again, 40 by 30 mil on that around the 50 carats worth. So let's reiterate because there's plenty again in this. Let's start off with um, all of your beautiful scoops. You get your monochrome scoop, you get your orange and red scoop, you'll get your satin cord and your black and your white. It's one mil, ten meters on both. You'll get your hemp cord as well in the uh, four different colors, nine meters on each. You get your small, medium and large of the memory wire too. You're then going to get your unikite. You're also going to get your lapis. You've got your amethyst there as well, and that stunning bronzite. They will all be in the same shape, and they'll all be in the same size. What you see on screen is what you'll be getting. Your price point today. Now listen, it should be, which already is pretty ace, isn't it, really? For the amount you're getting, that's pretty, that's a bit of a corker. Um, just for those gemstone scoops and those cabs, I think you'd be pretty chuffed with that price. Listen now. Listen. <laughs> Genuinely, the price we're about to go to is not a price that you should A, expect often, or B, get to see often. The lowest price normally we're hitting is around the $22.95, isn't it, for a designer inspiration. We try and keep our prices kind of in the similar bracket so you guys at home kind of get used to it. I know yesterday was a little bit different. Yesterday I had designer inspiration kits on that were um, $39.95 at a discounted price. $39.95, we had on $42.95. So those were kind of your boutique high end, so it was a little bit different. But as a general rule, your designer inspiration price, you're expecting around $29.95 or $27.95. Now and again, we'll push it down to a $22.95, won't we? You're probably not going to expect this. Your price point for all of this today is astonishing. £19.95 for everything. <laughs> that is not a designer inspiration price that we expect. That is not a designer inspiration, that's not a jewellery maker price that we expect <laughs> on a kit at all on any kit, is it? No, it's it not. It really isn't. And to have those four substantial, beautiful cabochons in there and all the spreading material, and the satin, and the memory wire, and all the bead scoops. I was just blown away. I can't believe that price. It's amazing, isn't it? And I could make, from what I've got left from the bead scoops yeah. alone, I could probably make, well, I had two bead scoops the other day in a kit, and I made 12 pieces of jewellery, and I had half a scoop left over. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, fab. So just by adding beading thread, and that had um, the hemp cord in there as well, so allow me to really make lots and lots of treats then. Loads and loads. Um, loads of you are already getting this. It looks like about a third of my stock has gone at the moment. Wow. Um, oh, I've got plenty though. Oh, that's good. I've got absolutely plenty. I've got over 150 of these, so a good chance for you all to get it. So please do get your hands on it because about just over 50 has gone so far once everyone checks out in particular because we don't expect that price of any kit, let alone one that has gorgeous cabs in it like Unikite, which we hardly ever see, Bronzite, which I haven't seen in the cab form before. No, At I all. haven't. No, I've, I've had bronzite in sort of rounds and, and, and nuggets before, but never in a cabochon. No, never. Oh, it's lovely. Never. Um, <laughs> you've had a lot of fun with this, haven't you? I have. I just really went to town and just played with what I had, and it was just really trying to, again, bring in different techniques. So, uh, being a beader, I did a beaded 
cabochon wrap, um, using the kumihimo in lots of different ways to hold that cabochon, and then just really going to town with the macrame as well. And had a fun, bit of fun with the bead scoop as well, and sort of made a stylized little um, bunch of uh, grapes with the leaves and the, and the beautiful little um, crackle quartz. Just beautiful. They're fab, aren't oh, they? Lovely. I like that about the bead scoop as well. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. You know yeah. the colour palette, you know the tones, yeah. but you will get a lots of different pieces. I had tons and tons of little hearts in there. That's what I made all the bottom of the beady cabochon with. Yeah. I had probably, I don't know, I must have had a whole strand of little beaded heart, little hearts in there. And they were amazing. So, you know, and along with everything else I had. It's fab, isn't it? It is, just amazing. Um, well, to everyone who is getting it already, congratulations. For anyone who does want it, you know at that price it's not going to stick around, especially with so many of those popular items in there, such as your bead scoops, like, wow. <laughs> um, so uh, do treat yourself to it if you want with those four cabs as well. And again, we're going to explore the cabs. You don't have to have worked with cabs for years and years no, and years, no. do you? No. Um, I just say to people, don't be afraid, just because it hasn't got a drill hole. Really don't be afraid. Embrace your techniques, whether you want to use friendly plastic and make a bezel for it, a setting for it, whether you want to use your polymer clay, um, whether you want to um, explore, you know, the stitching your peyote and maybe using some of your smaller beads, really do not be scared of them. They, all they are is a gemstone that doesn't have a drill hole. So, that, so once you get over that panic, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, absolutely, you are fine. Um, 1995, loads of these already gone. Something for beginners, something, well, something for everyone, yeah. really. Yeah. We do have the Kumihimo disc coming up in a little bit as well, so stay exact to Mondoli where you are. Okay. Where are we starting, love? We are going to do and talk you through and demo the Kumihimo cabochon piece. I am in love with this piece. It was worth every ounce of time to make it. And it's, it, you know, it's really one of those ones that you're not going to make five of these in an afternoon no but it's so worth it and so therapeutic and it's the thing I say about Kumihimo it's one of those really relaxing so once you get into the rhythm of doing it you can sit in front of the TV um, watch a under the designer inspiration show or a morning show and just make it to your heart's content absolutely agree with that okay so what we did what I did is I used the satin cords and I used the whole reel of the white satin cord and I cut it into eight pieces so, was it eight pieces? Yes, eight pieces. Okay. Um, so, literally took you off the reel and measured it out into eight equal pieces. And you will need long lengths because you're going to make the whole piece in one go. Okay. So, um, you need to do that. And then you need to measure four pieces of the black satin. And Same they length. No, they need to be longer Ooh. by probably about 50 centimetres. So make them 50 centimetres longer than Not your white than ones. White. Okay. Okay. The reason is when you make the spiral kumihima that's at the top, can you see the black is running on the outside of the spiral? Yes. And because it's crossing more threads, it uses more, more thread. More thread. I see. So you're going to need to account for that extra in there. Okay. Good point. And then what I did was I measured. I've got mine all set up here, so you can see. I've measured into almost the middle and kind of worked out that I was going to need about a foot probably of thread to make the central section which is this part that's going to go around the cabochon and so I then wire wrapped about six inches from the center of all my cords okay so your black ones that are longer you need to, to, to sort of center them in there so you're going to have 12 cords wire wrapped there Okay, I see. I'm going to show you how we set up the first disc. Okay. So I've got two discs attached to each other at the moment, so just ignore that. <laughs> ignore that, and I will show you how to set the disc up. Okay. So this is a 12 strand spiral pattern, okay. and whatever colour you want to appear as a predominant colour on the outside of the spiral, you have four of, and they will go north and south on your disc. And they will normally be set either side of your dot, but because I've been working this, it will move around your disc, so don't panic. Mm -hmm. But they just need to be north and south. Then what you need to do is three slots from that, you mm -hmm. need to add two of your white. Then you're going to have one, two, three, four slots in between and two more of your white, three slots back round to your black okay. and set that up. So you end up with two running north, south, east, north and south, and then you almost end up with this windmill effect with the white cords. And I know white cords aren't very d easy to see on screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our windmill strands. Now I always say you must hold them so there's nothing in the centre. 
Okay, and you see I've got nothing in the centre no, of those two, two sets of cords. And you work one side of your disc first mm -hmm. and then the other. So don't get confused and try and move it so it's at the top like you would do for a normal cummy hemo braid. Okay. This is where people end up. It makes a beautiful H, uh, 12 strand circular pattern, but you don't get the spiral. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my normal Kamihimo moves, but I'm only going to work on this side of my disc with the white cords. So I'm going to take top right and bring it to the bottom on the right, and then bottom left to the top left. Okay. And then I'm going to work this side of my disc. So I'm going to take top right to bottom right, and bottom left to top left. Now I've moved both sets of cords on both sides, I'm going to turn my disc, and I always turn mine in an anti-clockwise direction so my numbers are climbing. It doesn't matter if you're naturally a person who turns the other way, just continually keep doing that, otherwise you'll end up with, it'll start spiralling and then it'll unspiral. Okay. And then I'm going to move the black cords in the normal way, top right to bottom right, and bottom left to top left, and then I'm going to turn my disc. And again, I'm making it so that I've got that windmill, of cords and nothing in between. So I'm just going to do that again for you. So it's working the right hand side of the disc first, top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left on that side. And if it makes it easier for you to do it, if you actually put your hand over there and work the cords with your left hand, so top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left, until you know you've got that side done, and then turn your disc. Got you. That will produce. I'll take my weight off, that beautiful spiral pattern. Now one tip I will give you is when you move your black cords over in the centre, you might have a gap, I don't know if you can get in really close, can you see, I might have a gap in between my cords there where my finger is. Just pinch that together before you bring your black cords over. The reason for that is if you don't, I can just show you on, on the spiral, if you don't pull it really tight, what you'll see is you might see some black popping through between those two white spirals. Can you see how tight that is? You can't really see the black cords in there. So that's the reason for pulling those cords together. And it is important with this um, braid to have a weight on there. So if you have managed to get hold of the Kumihimo weights, brilliant. I used a 50 gram weight, which is this little clip here. Okay. So you're going to do that until you run out of cords. Okay. <laughs> and then what you're going to do is you're going to do the flat part. So I've got both of these coming up for you, don't forget. Um, we'll show you how <laughs> to use them both and then we'll yeah. bring them for you. Yeah. Um, and the flat, the, the square plate allows you to create beautiful, beautiful flat oh. braids. Um, and so how I set this one up, um, I had to think about it because of course I only had four black cords from doing the spiral so okay. I thought I'm going to set my plate up and I actually wanted to create this beautiful V pattern if I turn it over can you mm. see the V's running down there um, so I want to create that and to do that you set your disc up with your um, black cords in the center of the top and the bottom so the first two slots so if you're wanting to know the numbers it's four and five and 15 and 16 at the bottom mm -hmm. and then your other cords go two on either side of the black to the left and right at the top and bottom so okay. you'll end up with six cords top six cords bottom and you'll have that sandwich of the black in the middle mm -hmm. this braid is completely different and it'll throw you if you're used to doing a round braid but just get your your sort of memory your hand memory going okay. so I always say to people it's like driving a car you, you panic when you first learn don't you which pedal to use and where's the indicator gone it's the same with um, Kumihimo mm -hmm. when you start you're all fingers and thumbs you don't know where to put the cords but if you just practice you'll get into a rhythm and you'll just you won't even think about it got you so first thing we do is we move the two centre cords at the top and this motion is really important. We have to cross these threads because that's what draws the two sides of the braid together. Mm -hmm. If you forget to cross these two centre threads at this moment, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with, if you do it per, for uh, several turns, you'll end up with a hole running down the centre, which is really useful if you want to put a buttonhole in. That's a good idea. But if you want a braid that's all in one piece, you need to remember to cross them. Okay. So what you do is you take the cord that's in the centre at the left 
and you bring it across and you put it in the right hand side of your disc. Mm -hmm. And I always teach people without letters, just to learn the motions, okay. it's a lot, lot easier. Yes. So take the centre cord at the right and take it to the left of your disc. Now it's important here that you don't pull these really, really tight because what will happen with your braid is it'll, it'll push itself into the middle and you'll end up with like a concert, concertina effect mm -hmm. or a corset effect, it'll sort of squish it all together. So try and keep your tension nice and even. I'm going to put my weight on there because it'll help me. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to work again, you're going to work the plate in two halves. So I've got a left hand side and a right hand side and I always put, just remember to sort of block one side off. I've got a slit that's empty at the top of my desk, so that's going to tell me where I need to start. I'm going to take my finger down and pick up the cord that's directly below the empty slot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take it and put it into the empty slot at the top. Now, before you let go of this cord, just remember that if you're working on the left-hand side of the desk, you're always going to take the cord that's next to it on the left. Okay. So don't, I always say, don't leave empty-handed. Okay, don't let go. <laughs> so you're going to let go of that one and take the one right next door to the left, because we're working the left-hand side. Okay. And then we're going to take it to the bottom. I'm not going to leave empty-handed, I'm going to pick up the friend on the left-hand side and take it to the top. Pick up the next one on the left-hand side and drop it to the bottom. And keep going until you run out of cords. So I've gone top, bottom, top, bottom. And if you think about it as a weaving process, you're weaving over these warp threads. Hmm. That's an easier way of thinking about it. So again, I've got my empty slot on my right hand side is at the top. So I'm going to take my finger to the cord directly below it, pick it up, take it to the top. Don't leave empty handed, but pick up the neighbour to the right this time because we're working the right hand side of the board and bring it down. Pick his neighbour up on the right. Neighbour on the right, if I can find it. <laughs> drop it to the bottom and the last one bring it to the top okay so I've now exchanged all my cords top to bottom mm -hmm. so now I need to put these cords back now if we were working a 10 strand they would go back to the top but because we're working 12 strands they need to come to the bottom all right and I'm back to what I would class as a home position because all my cords are back I've got six at the top and six at the bottom so they're all back to normal and I could just put my disc down now and walk away from it and be able to pick it up and start again and know where you and were know exactly where I was yeah and so we're just going to do that process over again so we take the one that's at the top on the left and it comes to the right and again we take the one on the right and it comes to the left mm -hmm. And so we're just going to follow that process again. We're going to work the left-hand side of the disc first, remembering to keep these nice and not too tight because otherwise we get that, that corset effect on our okay. braid. If I do it a little bit quicker, so it's just top to bottom, bottom to top. And because I'm doing the left-hand side, I'm always picking up the left-hand neighbour. And then start again. I've got the empty slot at the top. Mm -hmm. So I bring my finger down, pick up the cord that's directly below it. And off we go again. Always remembering I'm on the right hand side, don't leave empty handy, pick up the neighbour, all the way across the disc. So that's how simple it gets. You get into that rhythm of just going top to bottom, bottom to top, and then you drop the cords that are at the side back to the bottom to create that home position again. So you can see through two movements what was in the centre two slots has moved to the outside centre two slots and it will go around and around the disc. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do, again like we did with the previous cabochon, is to measure around it with a spare piece of satin cord. So you know that the piece you're going to make will be long enough to go around it. Mm -hmm. So this piece should now be long Come enough. <laughs> so, do you want to, um, to move on? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Shall I yeah. do those discs yes, for you? Yes, because they're going to need them to be able to do this. Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, uh, you, you're going to need to create this look. Yeah. Um, you're going to need both discs so we're actually going to put them together for you oh, perfect perfect and we've got some cords with it as well now first off kumihimo itself is a technique if you're unsure it's a mm. technique that is simply just a woven technique in a way it's just moving cords in certain patterns to create woven textile cords and lanyards mm -hmm. and they're typically used in a lot of ceremonial things in Japan and China um, they're normally made from very very fine pieces of silk and they would in each slot have maybe anything from two or three to up to 40 or 50 strands in each slot so very very intricate work but it's been transformed onto a mobile 
easy to follow technique that we can use on these little foam discs. Which is Fab, amazing. isn't it? It is amazing. It, it is. truly is. Uh, anyone can have a go with this. Absolutely anybody. Uh, <laughs> youngsters. My son quite happily does it. In fact, he was. We kept picking us up, saying, "Can can I do this for you, Mom? Can I do this for you?" And I said, "Well, that's my sample one. And if you go any further, it won't be in the right place." Mm. So I actually set up another disc for him, and he quite happily uses the hemp cords beautifully to be able to to create his pieces. And he's wearing a beautiful multicolored one. That he keeps getting stopped and asked where he got it from. Yeah. So, absolutely, it is. Um, I've came here with because uh, my other job is I, I work uh, as a consultant for a charity, and we work with young people, and mm. they themselves um, have had many um, a tutorial with myself and with some of my colleagues in Kimihimo, and it is it's a it's a stress reliever even for for the youngsters. And we actually do it as part of the mental health. Uh, we do a mental health awareness um, kind of course as part of our um, part of the work that oh. we do and it is it's about stress release it's about focusing on the mind on something else and getting into a rhythm you beautiful your brain goes almost elsewhere yes you sort of float off yeah and your hands are quite happily during the bride but you're not really thinking about it and you just calm and relax and because so you can't do anything else while you're doing it you have to be there in the moment but your yeah. brain can be elsewhere and really relaxed it's lovely it is really therapeutic mm. isn't it so you've got the large kumihimo disc which i would say you know great for you as beginners because you know it's quite nice and easy to see everything isn't it also when you have more chords like we've got 12 chords on there it's nicer to have a bigger gap Bit between of them yeah. um, to get your fingers in there but you know again each disc has purpose in life. I love my smaller discs as well. Of course. <laughs> uh, you then have your square which you can see if we show the back of this again it does give you two different looks. So in the round shape you'll see obviously this is with a twisted effect but you create a round shape yes but with the flattened you can see it is the the square it is the flattened look so it's two different looks you get from yeah, this completely different looks. Uh, totally different looks mm -hmm. and really really easy to do so you have the square and the large round as well they are back in stock serious popular demand and um, what I will say is if you perhaps can't already have Yukumi Hemo discs. It's actually quite important to have a few, isn't it? Because very. tension changes. Very important. Because they're a foam disc, when you get them, the slots on the disc will, will be really close to each other. Yeah. And that's when you can use your fine gauge wires, your beading threads, um, your monofilaments, all those really fine um, cords that need um, the slots to be really tight together and grip the cord. After a while of use, they will open up a little bit. Okay. And that's when you start using things like your setting cords in them. And that's not a problem. After a while, those slots will open up even more. Mm. And that's when I use things like my sway deck cords, my um, sari threads, you know, the, the bigger gauge ones, things like that in those slots. And I actually write on the back of my new disc, F for fine. Mm -hmm. So I know that a brand new disc I can use all my fine mediums in. When it then changes, I put M on there. Okay. So I know it's a medium gauge and then I put L. So I know that I'm using all my larger gauges in there. And you can use, you know, if you wanted to use that was it four mil cord you know yeah. when your disc almost is at end of life that's when we would use that for. and you can yeah brilliant. yeah absolutely one thing I've just mm -hmm. pointed out one thing I've just noticed actually is I've not seen this disc before that has the north south east and west no that's new that's new mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that before yeah. you're used to the dots yes aren't normally you? you get dots we're used to the dots north south east west that's cool you also get the satin cords as well in there um so you've got 10 meters worth of each You've got your red, you've got your purple, you've got your blue and you have the yellow in there. 10 metres worth on each and it is a metres, uh, sorry it's one mil thickness. So both of these for you should be, all of this together. You're all seeing the should be price on your screen at the moment. We're actually taking it lower than that even though they're back in stock. Even though we know how much you adore them, we are taking it to a low, low price. Are you actually Liam? Are you having a giraffe? <laughs> I thought we were doing seven ninety five, not six ninety five. He changed his mind, he says. Why not? <laughs> six pounds and ninety five pence. I'm not surprised everybody getting their hands on this. Oh wow, your names have just come in very quickly, haven't they? No one expected that. It is important. 
if you do have um, lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of these, if you want to get kids involved, if mm. you want to get, because um, let's face it, it's getting to Christmas, it's getting to the Christmas holidays, yeah. it's nice to keep them entertained. If you want to pass on your skill, obviously we've got lots and lots of Kumi Hero DVDs. <laughs> Nearly worked. Um, <laughs> it is important for different chords to have different um, wands of your boards. Yes, definitely. I mean, also, as you can see, you know, if I was halfway through this project, I've got two boards tied up. I wouldn't really want to take these off my boards to you put another one place. on. Exactly. So it's easier for me just to keep these like that. I would put them in an organza bag, pop them in, in my project bag with everything that I need to mm. make it, and just pop it away. Yeah. until I was ready to finish it. Um, I always have a project on the go. I normally have it on the inside coat pocket and I just wherever I'm bored or, you know, get stuck at the bus station or doctor's appointment. Mm. I can come hemo. The time flies by. So have a spare one that you can work on on the travel, all sorts of different reasons. Um, also, if you're on flights, set these up with really long lengths of cord ready for your flight. Love that. And have some other cords ready cut with a little knot in. And you can just sit there and Because you don't need any extra tools. You can take these in your hand luggage. Yeah. Use peasy. Yeah, and you just tie an overhand knot when you get to the end. Um, and then when you've finished your, your braid, it's ready to use in the future. You know, you can put your ends on there when, it's, when you're at home. And you'll have loads of braids ready. Absolutely true. Completely true. Uh, congratulations. Your names have gone up on screen twice. There's so many multi-buyers. <laughs> you know how much you love these. Do treat yourself to them because that wasn't the price we agreed on. We agreed on 7 95 which is an absolute bargain. And an extra pound off, you've got both of them here. So maybe you've only ever worked with the round one. Absolutely fine. Maybe yours has gone a little bit loose and you want to, you know, get a brand new one so yeah. you can work with those finer cords. Like this, the Zari thread. Yes. You, you're going to need this yes. for the Zari threads, aren't you? You are. You, you need, you know, a, a new one. A new one, or certainly one that's really tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because it needs to grip the threads. Um, especially if you're doing a really fine one where you're only going to have one of the sari threads in each slot, you're going to really need it to hold onto the threads. So the last thing you want is for them to slip out and, and get tangled up and then you've lost your place in your braid and you get frustrated with it. For the sake of 6 95 I have paid, I will honestly say, full thread of 10 metres elsewhere, mm. nearly that price. Wow, that's Just amazing, for 10 metres of cord. So that's just amazing. I, the days before Jewelry Maker did, did this sort of thing, I mean, I had to get it from wherever I could, and I've paid that much just for one length. It's amazing, isn't it? it Honestly, is. uh, congratulations to you all getting that. <laughs> Hundreds of you have got it already. Congratulations, six ninety-five. Uh, why, why have we sold out? Oh, we've still got some. Okay, the kit's coming back on screen for you. Um, I thought we sold out of that then. The kit is coming back on screen for you. Okay, so right. okay, so I've got to the end of both of my um, of both of my pieces that I need to finish off. And what I normally do is I just have some any random small gauge wire you might have at home, and it doesn't even need to be a brand new bit. If you've cut off a length of of thread or um, of wire that's a low gauge or 0.4, anything up to a 0.6 really. Um, just keep them in a box. All you need is a little length, so mm -hmm. don't throw those away. If you have a wire work, you'll have tons. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take this off my desk, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, loosen, and loosen the threads, Basically. just gently, and you can see that they will slide through. And I'm just going to take it through to the other side of my desk. You can see the reason why on a flat braid I'm not going to want to do it because it's quite open. Can you see that, mm. that openness of the braid? Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm take my, th my wire in there. I'm going to squidge that together. And then I'm just going to pull my wire from one side to the other. So all I've done is crossed it over and pulled it. That will be enough to hold that for, for a few seconds while I get it off my desk. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Just take those cords off, like so. Oh. There's always one that gets stuck and left behind. <laughs> so that can take the disc off. Okay. And all I'm going to do with those is just wind that around, like so. And it doesn't matter that it's a different colour because this is going to get hidden. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the ends off as close as I can. And then with my flat pliers, just give that a, a squidge. 
Now what I would do with this is then I would change this end, this disc, to these chords, reset my disc up again for the 12 strand round spiral and spiral these ones on this end as well. Yeah. So you can see I've got quite a lot left, so I've probably got about two foot left, so I would have had roughly the same amount on the other end. Okay. You can see it doesn't make a huge length of braid, no. but it's long enough. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to do just the same thing on this end. Um, I'll just quickly take this off and I'm just going to hold this one. Okay, pokes. Otherwise I won't be able to show you how to get the cabochon in with all the discs on there. Okie dokes. Where's my wire gone? There it is. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly wire wrap this one as well. Same principle, just take it around, cross the threads over, the wire over. And can you see how it, it concertinas in yeah, when I you do you. it? So when you do this, you'll think, I'm never going to get all of those cords into the size kappa that you do when you put the um, Kabihimo ends on. But actually, because it concertinas down, you do get them into a, quite a small end. And I think I use the, not the largest one, but the next one down. I think it's the five mil interior diameter. Okay. End. End, yeah. yeah. So you can see that what you'll end up with when you finish is you'll end up with a spiral, then your flat braid, and then you'll end up with and a then spiral. spiral there again. Okay. Okay. And that will be enough to go around my cabochon. Well, it should be, hopefully, if I've measured it correctly. <laughs> no pressure. And if it's not, actually, you do get a bit of bit of give. A little bit of give. Cool. Okay. Let me just double check. Too late now, sir. If it doesn't fit. Fits perfect. It fits perfectly. I would have think I've planned it. <laughs> okay, so what I need to do is to now make this so I can make it fit round the cabochon. Because if I just put the cabochon in there now, it'll just slip out the front or the back. Okay. It won't, won't um, work. So what I need, unfortunately, cameraman's pet hate, monofilament. <laughs> and I've, what I've got is a, just a standard needle. I'm using a beading needle, but it's just what I had in my bag. Okay. Um, but... Um, any needle will do, a household needle is absolutely fine. Okay. Um, you know, Rage your sewing box, you'll be amazed what you can find. And um, if you find that your monofilament won't fit through your beading needle, yeah. there's a little tip for you. If you take the end of your monofilament and take your flat pliers. Clever. Because it's a round medium, quite often it won't fit through a flat eye. I know. So you just take your flat pliers and just squidge in a so little line. So you're fastening line. it. Yeah. Squidging a little line, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'll try and show you. Yeah, it's you can. just flattened it out ever so slightly. Yeah, you can see. Fab. And once you get that flat bit through, you'll be able to get the rest of it through your needle. Wow. Proof that it does work. I've actually managed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a line of running stitches. So you don't need to be a sewer to do this. It's literally um, take it up and down the edge and don't try and force it through where it doesn't want to go through the braid um, just literally it doesn't need to be every cord or anything like that just take it through and what you'll find is you'll probably want your flat nose pliers just to grab the end of the needle and pull it through because I find it easier that way because there's a lot of tension there to get through and then just take it to the end so, try and get that last one. There we go. So that's how quick it is. It doesn't. It's not. You know, you're not going to be judged or anything on your neatness of your sewing. And what you need to do is leave um, a tail on either end. So I've got a tail on that end and a tail on that end of my monofilament. I see. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm just going to flip my work and do exactly the same on the other side. So two little quick. So it's on the same. Is it? on the same top? It's on the opposite side. The opposite side. Yeah, because I need to make um, basically a drawstring on both sides of this Kamihimo. So they just keep going. So I'm making like a little bag for it, the, the cabochon to sit in. There we go. And I'm pulling that just through pull it again. Through. Yeah. Then what I 
learned from the hard way is if you hold on to the opposite end, if you're yeah. going to pull this through, there we go. And don't lose the end. Now, a tip with the needles and monofilament is they want to go right to the end of your needle. If you put, because I want to take this out of the needle, if you pull it back a little bit and then put your finger right up against the eye of the needle to help okay. support it. If you just try and pull this, you can break your beading needle and break the, the top of it. Okay. So that's taken that out. So now what I've got is two tails on either end and I've got a drawstring um, Kumihimo. Okay. So this is the fiddly bit now. Let me just move all this out of the way. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick Where's my bottom one? There we go. Top monofilament on that side, and the top monofilament on that side. I'm just gently going to pull them. Okay. Can you see it gathering? Yeah, I can see it's sort of just pulling starting it to pull and pucker. Yeah, I see. And then I'm going to turn my cabochon upside down. Put, turn this towards me. Yeah, go ahead, that's fine. And um, oh, I'm here. I'll pull it a little bit more. So you're holding the cab. I'm holding the cab, Sean. And I'm pulling because it. Because of the monofilament that's gathering around the cube. It is, fluid. it is. And then I'm just going to grab both of those and I'm okay. going to do a surgeon's knot. Now, the reason you do a surgeon's knot, and a surgeon's knot is a standard overhand knot, but then when you take the tail through the circle you've formed, do it twice. twice. Mm -hmm. And the reason you do that, you know when everyone says, could you just put your finger there and hold that knot? Yeah. If you use a surgeon's knot, you don't need anyone don't to do that. that. No, no. <laughs> so hopefully it'll stop it from springing back on okay, me. Okay, okay. And I've just done hopefully enough to be able to get that to come together. Could you just put your finger on top of my cabbage? Absolutely for can. Me? That's lovely, thank you. So that should be enough on that one and then I can get the other two tails ah. and hopefully tie a little knot in them and pull those together. Ah uh, yes and that's and how it's see? gathering. It's just going to gather up around the cabochon like that and then you just kind of need to pull it up around the sides of the cabochon and get that knot in place. I see. And, and you'll hold. see it'll start to hold it. It starts to hold it front and it the will back, do. doesn't it? Yeah, obviously yeah. you've not tied it not just tied so you it. can show. But so can you see that that will pull round? Yeah, I see. And that's all I've done on that one. So if I can show you that one, so, so you can see. One. Do you want me to pass it yeah, over? Yeah, just so I can show. I'm gone. <laughs> I've got some Kumihimo cord ends coming up for you in a little bit if you need them. So you can see at the front, it's only just touching and you will spend lo a lot of time at home fiddling around trying to get those, those tight, but it will work and then you'll end up with it pulled slightly tighter at the back and that will stop the, cam uh, the cabochon from coming out. Fab. And then I had two sort of messy bits where I had my I really see where I had the wire where I've actually braided and uh, tied in Tied the wire. Them, yeah. So I had a little bit of wire that I'd been crocheting or whatever. It was just sat there looking at me from the table and I thought, oh crikey, I can use that. So um, you can create a little piece as well, just like this, um, to cover over any of those um, bits that you want to hide. So to do that, all you need to do is just take a little piece of wire. Okay, just whilst we mentioned the crochet, so we'll message in um, asking what hook did we use for the crochet? It was the eight mil, but you can do it smaller. It depends yeah. on whatever design you want. If you use a smaller hook, you just need a few more rows yeah, of um, going back and doing the single stitch. Okay, so I just took, I mean, uh, that was, I think that was the soft wire 0.6 from the previous, from the previous kit, kit. Mm -hmm. but I mean you can use it whatever gauge wire so if you've got a larger gauge wire which I had here just fold it in half and create your first sort of loop and then take the tail through that loop yeah. and just keep and pull it through and do the same on the opposite side and just sort of freeform lots and lots of loops That's clever. and then you'll create 
a piece that'll end up something like that to just keep free forming and it'll just cover up a multitude of sins. That's good. Um, I quite happily do that with my pieces because it adds interest and it just hides the working. Um, and then it was just a matter of adding on the Kumihimo ends. Fab. And to do that, all I did was where I've got the wire here that's temporarily um, holding this end, yeah. I just took some monofilament and literally wrapped it around and around and around and tied a surgeon's knot or two in the end. Then you can remove the wire and cut that end and it will be ready to be glued in to one of your Kumihimo ends okay. like that. Um, and that's all you need to do to finish that piece of jewellery. How fab is that? Isn't that simple as you like? Isn't it just? Um, I do have some cord ends for you, uh, for Kumihimo, but also for things like Macquarie too. If you want to have a little nosy at them, you absolutely can. Take a look. Um, we've got the small Kumihimo ends here. I'm sizing on those, I'll let you know in a moment, but you're getting uh, two pairs of those. You're also going to be getting the cord ends. It's really simply, all you have to do is put your cords in there, close up each side, close them down with a pair of your pliers and then they have got the eye loop at the top there so you can add on your clasp or your chain or whatever you want to. Again, you're getting four of those. Um, you're also getting these two quite large toggle clasps here. Uh, you get two sets of those. The toggle themselves are around 14 mil for the round and the T-bar is 24 mil, so the perfect fit with a really nice high shine detail. You're getting loads and loads of those jump rings, absolutely loads of them. Um, approximately 27 mil is the external diameter on those ones. You've then got the shepherd hooks, which I love these shepherd hooks. They're the ones with the really delicate kind of ball detail that when you wear them from the front, you see, you just get that little, that little, little touch. Zhush. Little touch. Mm. You're not wrong. Little touch of detail. Um, so you get a few pairs of those. I think you get four pairs of those ones, do you? Yes, you do. Um, I've also got your lobster claw clasp as well. These are the super duper sturdy ones that we've got here. Um, your sizing on those ones, because they are much larger than the usual, is 15 by 7 mil on those. Um, you also get these twist um, caps. I don't know if you'll have seen these before. Some people might, might not have. So these are your twist cord ends. So you've got your um, hole internally within here, which is where you can put your Kumihimo cord, etc. And to get them apart, they're actually a twist mechanism. So it's a, it's a corkscrew in a way. You have to twist them apart. So there's no magnet in there. No, it's just a twist. So it's like uh, taking the cap off a bottle of pop. Yeah. It's that kind of twist that we've yeah. got in there. I have though got your magnets in here if that's what you're into. Um, these are the, let me show you, super duper strong magnets these ones. Um, you have got two pairs of these, these are your barrels. You want to see how strong this magnet is. It is super duper <laughs> strong. Let me put these on the table. Hang on. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, hang on. They are so strong. The great thing about them being strong is the fact that if you have a piece on, you want to make sure that they're going to be strong enough to stay on. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a kid and they're going to yank, at yep. work it happens a lot, you want to be sure that it's still going to undo. So have a look. This is how strong these are. You ready? Hang on. My other one's coming close. Da, 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 da. Look at that. <laughs> that is how strong they are. Do you know these are brilliant if you want to make multifunctional jewellery as well because you can have a magnet on the end of... Um, a neckline piece and a bracelet that's matching and if you then want to go for that real long length neckline piece you can use the bracelet at the back to make the neckline you piece longer. You absolutely can do so. Yeah. Uh, so these are great for Kumihimo but also just your general um, kind of creative pieces really yeah. aren't they? Um, there was a lady the other day who'd made a really fine Kumihimo piece and she wanted something to finish the ends off and the Kumihimo caps were too big so that those screw um, uh, finish. The screw barrel. Yeah, they're mm. perfect and they're also perfect if you're using monofilament as well because quite often that's quite difficult to finish off pieces so you can hide the knots of your monofilament inside there. Absolutely. Um, so congratulations to everybody. Silver plated. Your price point today. Nine pounds and 95 pence for you today. That is absolutely astonishing. 
That is such a great prize. Congratulations to everyone who's getting your hands on it. Um, really well done to you all. If you want to catch up on these, if you want to grab your hands, on, get your hands, sorry, <laughs> on these types of things, this is the way to do it. 9.95 for you. Congratulations, everyone. Okay, well, we've got a good seven minutes. Good seven minutes, yes. right. Okay, let me see if I can quickly talk you through how to get the base of the macrame piece done good plan yeah okay, okay. so this good is the one that we're looking at yeah. with that gorgeous bronzite do we have any of this kit left over i ask myself we must do because it's at the bottom of the screen please do not forget for me all of the goodies that you got in there three cabs you had one, two, three, four, five, six lengths of cords, one with the hemp cord and one with the satin cord. You had a small, medium and large of your um, uh, memory wire. How funny is that, that I forgot the word memory wire? Oh. <laughs> um, and those four gorgeous cabs. So it was absolutely loaded in there. 19.95, it's not a price point you're often seeing. I, I've got hundreds of these have gone, uh, well, just over a hundred. So I've got probably about 40 left is it about 40 50 left uh, so do treat yourself if you want them we did have a decent enough quantity I started off with about 180 19.95 for you today congratulations everybody getting your hands on that okay macrame excuse the state of my macrame board I use them for everything so I've got glue on the bottom of this so I'm good. really sorry um, you need your macrame board with um, the numbers facing towards you okay um, and you can see I've set my one square apart um, on the board yeah um, and what you need is two really long lengths about a meter 20 of your hemp and you need to put those sort of in the center of your of your board and anchor them at the top just slightly down from the center and then you're going to need quite a long knotting piece of cord probably about uh, the cord for knotting is needing to be again about a meter 20 okay Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to create a sequence of knots that are going to basically be a net that's going to hold your cabochon. So instead of using the Kamihimo, I've used the macrame knotted pieces. And the way you knot down here is whichever cord you're knotting over, you're going to do a knot to the inside and then a knot to the outside. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. So you create a loop. I'm going over this cord here. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to create a loop to the inside you're then going to take the tail underneath the cord that you're knotting around and bring it up into the loop you made. Mm -hmm. That's half of the knot. And you're going to pull that tight. Okay. And then you're going to go to the outside. Can you see I've created that? Yeah, I see. Outside. Outside shape. Yeah. The reason you do it that way is because when you create a knot to the inside, it sends the cord to the outside. And then when you do a knot on the outside, it sends mm -hmm. the cord to the inside, which is ready to move to the other side. I'm just going to pull that tight. Okay, got you. So, do you want me to hold that up so you can see all of those knots? There we go. So they're running up and down the board. Yeah, I see. Okay, and you just literally carry on doing that until you have a long enough piece to cage um, your um, cabochon. So I'm just going to do the last one, and it's important that the knot you finish on is on the opposite side to where you started. So I started on the left. I'm going to finish on the right, and this should now be long enough. And it's important again to use something to keep this you can see i've got my macrame pins in there yeah. to keep it one square's width apart because when you tie knots the natural thing is it's going to want to pull together and you don't want so that. you want just use your pins and keep moving them down and keep pinning it out Fab. to keep it out there right so we can take this now off our board Fab. and i'll show you all the workings of it Oops. Within an inch of its life. So the last mm -hmm. thing you want when you're transporting this is for it to fall off the board. There we go. Right. So I can move my poorly macrame board out of the way. So you'll end up with a long length of cord. Now, to me, when I look at this, there's probably a right side and a wrong side, but it, it's how your personal preference is. And again, I'm just going to pick my cabochon up and I'm going to put it so it's facing with the round side to the bottom. And I'm going to take the two ends of the same cord, the one that we've just knotted over, these are the bottom ones. Yeah. And I'm just going to, again, 
bring that together mm -hmm. and holding that there it is quite fiddly but it's worth the time to pull these together okay and once you're happy that that's roughly where you want it to be you can take the cabochon out and tie I always just tie this in a standard overhand knot mm -hmm. because I'm going to want to come back and tighten that up. So I've got a little cage for my cabochon to sit in. Yeah. It might not be quite tight enough yet. I'm going to take the two tram line cords on the top. This is my knotting cord that's sitting up there. Mm -hmm. So I just want to tuck that out of the way. And then I'm going to bring, again, create an overhand knot. Start pulling that in. Again. Squidges in again. Squidges in again. And again, I'm just going to do an overhand knot because I'm going to adjust this. So you can see it's not yet quite tight enough. It's no, quite not quite yet. Baggy. Yeah. So each time you do it, you're just going to come back and unpick your overhand knot. And if it helps, use something like the macrame pin just to get in there and loosen the knot. Okay. Um, that's why you don't use a surgeon's knot because you won't be able to get it undone get it again. Undone now. And then I normally just undo. Normally at home I'll be able to get my head right in the way. It's <laughs> all right. Don't worry. Um, don't worry about it. Undo that. There we go. Yeah. And then find the other tail. Mhm. Mm and just. Start to tighten it now. Squidging it in. Can I ask you, which I wouldn't Push normally do, could you just put your finger in the middle there, just where those two knots are? Oh, Here? There. Yeah, Here. perfect. Yeah. Hard to describe where to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to pull that tight. There we go. So that's really got my cabochon in there nice and tight now. Got you. Perfect. Okay. So what I did then to start to build up the rest of the, the neckline mm -hmm. piece is I need to add some more cords into there. Um, and to do that, um, what I did was I cut some shorter lengths. These are about 80 centimetres long pieces of cord. Yeah. And what you need to do is count down the side um, of your piece. So can you see I've got one line coming over here. I'm not going to use that, but I'm going to use this one here. I can show you. Can you see it's my it's first that, knot? So I'm not going to use the first one. I'm going to come to the, the second one. one. And what I'm going to do to get that cord through is I'm going to use my flat nose pliers, or my round nose pliers, and then take the cord through the gap. I see. Like that. Squidge through. Squidge through. Like so. And don't panic if it comes out because you can probably put a hole there now. Use my round nose, tip of my round nose pliers to grab hold of that and pull it through. I did that twice, and then I also took the top knotted cord and took it through the first knot. That gave me six cords on that side okay. to work with. And then, can I just show you on here because I know we're a bit short yeah, of on. time. Yeah, probably got about you, a minute or two yeah. left. Can you see here? I've got a row of knots. To get that row of knots in, yeah. That first sort of vertical row of knots. Yeah. What I did was take just a normal piece of, our, of hemp cord, tied an overhand knot in it. Mm -hmm. Overhand knot. Just an Do overhand it, yeah. knot. Cratched it to my macrame board yeah. and took one end, pulled it across all the tails and then did a set of macrame knots over it. Okay. That gives me another two cords on that side to work with. Okay. And then I had eight on each side and then did the knotting and the beading up the side. Fab. I hopefully will get a chance to show this another time and really in detail to show you how to, to be able to do that. But it is a lovely piece. But if you've got that go base, well. some people are quite happy they've just got the macrame base around the pendant. Um, and you can just use square knots to create a bale if you want to with get the you. tails that you've got here. It's up to you how you do it. Yeah. So once you've got that, that net, that cabochon's not going anywhere. Yeah. What you choose to do with it from there on, you could take all the cords, knot them off, glue them down, because it's um, a natural base cord. You can't use your thread zapper yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. But you can knot them all in, 
then you could just add you know, a chain through the knots at the top if you just want to put it onto a chain. You could do a wire work piece. The world's your oyster. Sorted. Lovely. Uh, the, thank you so You're much welcome. for showing us all of those techniques. They're Very absolutely cool. fab. <laughs> we'll be back with Sarah in a bit for her challenge. <laughs> After the break, I have got the Wow Wow Wowzers Boulder Opal. I also have those Druzy Cabs. Stay where you are because we'll be back in about three and a half minutes. See you in a bit. <laughs> Jewelry Maker ships to the following countries. We offer two delivery services, standard and premium. So wherever you are in the world, Jewelry Maker are never far away. Did you know you can purchase incredible jewelry featuring genuine gemstones on our sister channel, Gems? Come along and see what treasures you can find. Did you know that if you go to jewelrymaker.com and sign up to our mailing list, then you will receive 20% off your first order with us. We'll also keep you updated with special offers, themed shows, program guides and Jewelry Maker tutorials. Jewelry Maker. Create. Wear. Share. Jewelry Maker is your one-stop shop for all your jewelry making needs. Our mission is to provide you with the best quality products. Value for money an excellent customer service. Come and learn with us. Tune in every day from 9am to 9pm. Jewelry Maker. Create. Wear. Share. You can now keep in touch by liking Jewelry Maker UK on Facebook. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. We all know that you need the right tools for the job. So here at Jewelry Maker, we have developed our very own tool set just for you. In this larger set, we have provided more tools to help you develop your jewelry making skills even further. The kit includes wire cutters, a bead reamer with replacement tips, an awl, tweezers with a scoop, a sliding gauge, a snip and all the essential pliers you will need. All of this is yours for just £15.95, neatly presented in a carrying case with an embossed jewellery maker logo. Stay tuned for more advice, tutorials and demonstrations of jewellery making. We provide the tools, you provide the skill. You can now keep in touch by liking Jewelry Maker UK on Facebook. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. Welcome back everyone to Designer Inspiration. We are already into our last hour. Can you believe it? I can't, it's gone fast today. Probably because I'm having such a whale of a time with lovely Sarah Oven. Hi love. Hello. How are you? Oh, good, thanks. Really good. Good. Um, what have you been up to recently? Anything exciting going on in the life of Sarah Oven? Um, I've got a very busy weekend coming up. Oh I'm yeah, you've got workshops mm, all over the shop, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, so um, I'm off to Glasgow this weekend. That's where Gosh. I'm going. Uh, so that's my busy weekend. Oh, um, and then I'm back, I believe, Wednesday to do a morning show. Oh. I've been very, very busy with jewellery maker, so... And you have? Yeah, it's just been great fun. You have? It feels like you live here, to be honest. 
do you know, I think I need a bit of string or spring from to get me from home to here. Yeah, again. just a one big boing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we have got Sarah Elvin for the next hour. We'll have a look at her challenge in a bit. How's it going? Um, it's, it's started to take shape very it's, slowly. It's, it's yeah. going, yeah. is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have got some exquisite gems to fit in in the next 50 minutes. So let's get started, shall we? Where shall we start? Producer Liam. Side desk. Oh, oh, my beautiful opal. Okay, now, wait, hang on. Let's talk to you first off about opal. So, there's lots and lots and lots of different types of opal, isn't there? Loads and loads of different types. Um, <coughs> sorry. Some of them are named after location. For example, um, your Ethiopian opal named after location. Um, you get ones that are to do with the colour, so uh, your fire opal you can get. You can get a fire opal from a couple of places in the world. Some people think you can only get fire opal from Mexico. Not true, you can get it from America as well. Um, so you get fire opal and you get ones that are named after the way that they appear. The thing I love about this type of opal is the fact that the name suggests how it appears but it's actually to do with the location as well. You can only get boulder opal from one location, which a lot of people do not know. You can only get it from one location, and that is Australia. And it's in a, there's a few areas around there, but Queensland is the biggest, most kind of notorious place. So this is your Australian boulder opal. Do you want to have a look? It's absolutely gorgeous. I love everything about it. <sighs> Boulder Opal is phenomenal. Now, why do I say that this quality is just blowing me away? Well, I'll show you why. Because of the clarity. In Boulder Opal, in the lower price rank Boulder Opal, you will not be getting clarity, but you do with this one. Look at that. Of course, you won't have to carry a torch around with you. You'll be able to see this in the normal light. It's just the studio lighting doesn't give you that impact. Boulder Opal, for me, is so fab because of the way it's formed and you can see that within here you can see the formation within here can't you um because can we have that picture of you to send you that picture of the formation i did didn't i yeah can we have it on the back plasma ignore the uh, arrows i did one wrong anyway um so we're going to start off up here this is how this is formed so this is a picture of kind of the crust of the earth as it were and this is the water table now the water table will rise over time so in this is in the summer so obviously the water table is very very low if we come over this way um, when it's getting to rainy season um, the water will come down it trickles through the crust of the earth so that means that the water table inside the earth will rise and it will rise to these areas where there's lots and lots of cracks and crevices now we're going over this way we're going this way. So, as the water's falling down, that water rises and it will cover the crevices. Now, as the sun comes out, we're coming back over this way, as the sun comes out and that water lowers, what's left behind is opal. But that doesn't happen in one fell swoop. That section there doesn't happen once. That section of the opal being filled up will be this whole process this whole process happening thousands and thousands and thousands of times that's what happens and that is why you get this look because imagine at this point for example at the because the clarity points you can generally tell at the clarity points here that might have been a particularly rainy season where there was very very little um, silica based substance within the water table the white areas that we're coming up to here that might have been a particularly dry period where there was lots and lots of minerals and lots and lots of elements within the crust of the earth which meant that it's a bit of a thicker type gauge one thing I love about boulder opal as well is, you know those clarity areas that you get? You could have, in those clarity areas, up to 20% liquid. That's when it's made up of, um, opal is, has a lot of liquid within it. So those areas could be 20% liquid. But then the white area, literally just the band above it, could be as low as 5% liquid in that area. All of this is over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years and you get that gorgeous layering effect. I think it's beautiful. Now, Boulder Opal, it is from one place, 
Boulder Opal is from Australia. It's from your. Uh, it's from Queensland. Now, if I may, can I get my phone out? Is that all right? Go on then. Yeah, I'm going. I won't show you the name. Don't worry. Oh, I've had a text. Um, it's because I had a little look, and <laughs> this is just on our website at the moment. Let me show you this. Let me hide that bit. This is on our website at the moment. This is the most, the closest in um, kind of the pieces that we have, jewelry maker. So I've got 150. This is this is 250. You've got two strands there. So obviously this has got 100 carats more. 19.95. The closest one to us is that one there. 120 carats worth. I've got 30 carats more on my strand. 14.95. So those are the prices that we're used to expecting for this beautiful Australian bowl of opal. That's what we're used to. That's straight on our website right now. So that's what we're used to expecting. Around the £15 mark for this carrot weight. You'd be expecting probably closer to 17 generally. Especially for this quality with this clarity. Because we have got some on the website that is lower in price. But one of them in particular I have seen and there is no clarity to that whatsoever. Your price point today, this is thousands and thousands of years in the making at £11.95, but it's my favourite gemstone and I want all of you to own it, so I am going to drop the price. You're not going to expect this. It's not £10.95. I'm taking it down. Everyone get your hands on this to see true boulder quality opal. Your face then, Sarah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I want those so much. Oh, they are amazing. I am absolutely in awe. You know how much I love opals yes. anyway. Um, and I just love the fact that they are everything a gemstone should be and more because they've got that fingerprint of mother nature on them they're all individual but then you've got all of those beautiful characteristics coming through and for anyone who loves opal these are just a must for your collection even if you're not going to make any jewelry out of them just sit and look at them honestly <laughs> get them home to really appreciate them a money back guarantee until january 31st what i will say to you is Honestly, it's so nice to see how Mother Nature forms things. Imagine just having these on your stands, on your stall. Imagine just a single pendant. I could see these as unisex pieces as well. Definitely, because they've got that real steely edge to them, haven't they? Yeah. They've got beautiful colour tone coming through. Oh, do you know what? I love all you people who are buying this. I really do. I feel like we have something in common. I feel like we both understand how special Opal is and how wonderful it is. There's lots and lots of you multi-buyers on this as well. Don't expect that price for Boulder Opal. You've just seen a live link from our website, the prices you should be expecting for this quality point. We have got a strand on the website, the lowest strand of this one beautiful area um, gemstone that we have on our website at the moment is £6.95, but I've seen that in real life and there is zero clarity to it. That isn't the gem kind of quality type that you're looking at there. That's kind of the all one base color and you don't get those lovely lines in it because I have seen it in real life. Um, one pound extra for the pinnacle point for more closer to the people point to quality. Yeah, yes please. Um, 150 carats worth, congratulations to everybody. What did you say then, love? From the drawer. Oh, I've got them jerseys coming up in a bit, don't forget. Oh, I love these. I just love the colour, really. And I love the banding. And I love the amount. So I love quite a few things, actually, <laughs> now I think about it. <laughs> um, you've got a massive, oh, sorry. You've got a massive amount of goodies on here. Um, oh, no, wait, are we in the last chance saloon, are we, on these? Let me show you the graduation first off, and then I'll get your pricing, because I'm in last chance saloon quantity. Huge, all the way to the dainty. So you have got on here from around 16 mil of faceted fun, all the way to your delicate six mil on these ones. So beautiful array there. What's your favorite thing about this strand, Pete? I love the color of it. You love the color of it, do you, Pete? Yeah. Why? What is it about purple you like? Just yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, have you ever thought about I'm becoming? Not... Have you ever thought about becoming a presenter? Because <laughs> that, that's a great. That's you have a look to say. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. Probably the same reason Sarah does. 
Going back to the same reason Sarah does, yeah. just so cocky because and Sarah. We love the colour, don't we, so. so that's, that's all Pete and Sarah are so much in common. That is not an attractive <laughs> angle. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this entire strand here for you today. It's a massive length. I'm going to have this touch it at the back. Look how long that length is. Um, your price point today is the lowest we can go on a singular strand, six ninety five for you. Every single one individual. There's lots of banding on this. There's lots of areas of clarity, interest, detail. There's whites, there's purples, there's pinks all roaming through here. Um, there's lots going on in this for you to appreciate, and it's faceted on top of that low figures, low stock opportunity for you right now. Two hundred and eighty carats worth. Don't think, oh, you've only got thirty. What's the point of me ringing in and giving it a go? Just give it a go. Give it a go. Um, because it's worth a it's worth a go, isn't it? It's worth a go. Uh, six pounds and ninety five pence for you today. That is a beautiful strand. Congratulations. Ooh, uh, look at the quality of this. Wow, topaz. Different variety. Different variety to what I brought you earlier on, but same astonishing quality. How do you know that? Because of what you get with it. This is our most prestigious, really, of titles for our gemstones. It is a Gems of Distinction strand. And you can tell that quality instantly, can't you? Look at that. Blue topaz. Blue being one of the rarest of colour tones. Of course, there is the imperial topaz, which still has the topaz in its name. Um, some people get confused by it sometimes because we often say here, blue is the rarest of colours of topaz um, and, and sometimes and often the most sought after colour. But then people say, wait, well, imperial topaz, I thought that was rarer. It is, but that's imperial topaz, so it is technically different. It's a different branch, it's a different vein. You've got that beautiful blue tone, almost a sky blue actually running through here isn't it a hundred carats worth of this faceted exceptionally well the craftsmanship is absolutely mind-boggling really isn't it huge amounts for you to appreciate here this is such a stunning stunning strand all top drilled let me show you the amount. You're getting so many on there, you really are. Um, your price point today for this stunning strand. Is not. All I want to say right away is to every single one of you, you're getting yourself a bargain at that price. We're taking it down though. It's not £25. Nope. It's just... It's a tiny, tiny, we're going down. Gems of distinction. Do, do, do. 17 pounds and 95 pence. This is a gems of distinction strand. This is a piece that has been carefully, specifically selected for its quality. And it, it states it right there, what I want to say to you all. Seriously, congratulations on your purchase. Um, every single gem has been hand faceted, and that's what the picture is beside, uh, to maximise the brilliance and the lustre of the gemstone. Well, boy, oh boy, you can see that, can't you, on this? You really can. Look at that brilliance. Look at that lustre. Congratulations to everyone. I don't think anyone expected us to take that much off a strand of your gorgeous topaz, did you? No one expected that, I don't think. big aren't they these are chunky oh this is similar to that strand of the uh, orange colour we had on the other day isn't it very similar 650 carats it's like the butterfly wings one that's how I described it isn't it oh was I did I have I done this one have I look at that isn't that really beautiful it's like a butterfly wing isn't it or, or a dragonfly wing that's clarity something we don't often see with our gate really is it obviously you get it more on some gems than you do on another <laughs> it does look a bit like a pair of lips doesn't it <gasps> um, you have got all of these different shapes all of these different sizes There's lots going on I love the look of this one it's got almost pinks running through it there there's a fab amount. Do you know what I love about this strand as well? 
the way that we've sliced it, we've sliced it so that the host, essentially, so we've imagine there's a host rock that's here. So this is obviously the outside of the host rock. We've sliced it so that you get a bit of the host, but you get a bit of the slice in the middle. You'll see exactly what I mean when I show you one of these. So let's have a look. So you see, obviously, this is how you shine. We faceted this bit. We've done that too at the base of this one. But then look, can you see this section here? That is the outside of the gem itself. So we haven't messed with this. We wanted you to see the organic nature of this piece. It's the same on these ones, look. See? Little bit of polish applied, that's it. Little bit of polish, but you actually get to see the organic feature of the rock itself, which I think is really fun. Um, oh, goodness, that's gorgeous one, that, isn't it? Simple little pendant, and, and you sort it, I think. You don't need to overwork these at all. What about with the, um, you know, the uh, sort of techniques that lovely Sarah has shown us today, working with the cabs? You could do pieces like that with this quite easily, couldn't you? It might be quite nice, the crochet idea on this, actually, because it gives it a bit of an organic feel, but also the look of the crochet almost is kind of what you're seeing internally, actually, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so you've got 650 carats worth of these here. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten on my strand. Let me show you one individually. This is the smallest one on my strand. That is an individual pendant. Sorted, isn't it? Look how it catches the light as well. You get that banding, but then you get that real interest of when the light hits. Um, so, your price point, I love how it's, it's, every single one of these is so unique and different. And um, your price point today, massive carrot weight, it's just £11.95 for you today. Congratulations to you all who are planning on getting your hands on this. It's a beautiful colour tone. What would we think of doing with this lovely Sarah to really show it off? Um, you could go really simple and take through the centre some of your satin cords and maybe do some very simple macrame type or braiding or uh, square knot type details on the neckline and just have the gemstone as a central pendant because you can get so many cords through these. They are I think the last time I think I got four strands of satin coil through them very very easily um, so you've got lots you'll be able to do there if you're a wire wrapper go for your wire wrap details you've got a natural anchor point so if you're just starting wire wrapping they're really easy to handle um, but then again you could you, you team this up if you want to go for a really dramatic piece maybe make some um, polymer clay beads to go with it which are really going to sort of take that a, sort of an aspect from them and maybe put some gold leaf and just try and emulate that sort of crackled effect. Fabulous. The oh, they're amazing. They are. The drill holes are absolutely I huge like you say. You can get so much through mm. there. Congrats to everybody getting those. Sorry that came from over there didn't it? Um, oh the druzy. Okay. This is about to get really really exciting. Um, you will be getting your hands on druzy cabs. I personally have never seen that before. Now, I need to make you aware that we know these are going to be extremely popular because of the appeal of them instantly. I also need to let you know that I've got less than a hundred of these and that sounds like a lot. It is not. Druzy cabs, get ready because they are phenomenal. Perfect for this time of year. Add your own winter wonderland. These are your white druzy ovals. You will be getting 120 carats worth. That will equate to three pieces of this beautiful druzy. And they will be in size around 30 to 22 mil. Let me just show you around so you know there's no drill hole in here whatsoever. All of these with that gorgeous twinkle now you know i always tell you what i will say is i don't actually think you're getting an impact of the actual twinkle from these i genuinely don't because when you're looking at them the shiller they're coated so the sheen you get let me show you on a black background maybe hang on i've got some steps here will that work um they have got the uh coating on so you get a rainbow, like a bubble effect on the top of all of these. It's fantastic. Oh, sorry. 
it's tricky for you to see get it home you know money back guarantee for a crazy amount of days until the 31st of jan they are so so stunning and um, you know how i always talk to you about agate and uh, agate about druzy and how i say it's like driving in the car and, and you go and you go under a, a bridge don't you and it gets colder on this one here which i think is Fab. I'm not saying that you'll definitely get this. You probably might not, but it's just random that from the selection we've been given, I have got this. I've got part Druzy, part host rock. Have a look. So you know I'm always talking about how you get silica-based substance a lot of the time that enters a porous rock. Look, that's your porous rock. That's your host rock. That is what the silica based substance water comes around because this rock is almost like a sponge it goes and it gets sucked in to um the host rock into the hollow of the host rock and because it's so cold these druzy just almost freeze in time because the pressure changes and everything else changes but look you can see every single one of these at the side the form i would love to just i know it sounds a bit Sort of not properly, but that would be the type of thing I'd just like to have kind of on a coffee table or on my stall or I wouldn't really need to do much, but I could because I've got three to play with and that's what you'll get too. Now, we don't have these often at all, do we? Does anyone remember when, about a year ago, we got Druzy on a strand and I want to say we got either three pieces or five pieces of Druzy and they weren't like this because they weren't shapes. They were kind of just random form shapes. Oh, I know. They were kind of overly shapes and they were often purple. They had a drill hole um, and they were kind of purpley sheeny. Do you remember those? I remember those. I remember those. That's about a year ago, isn't yeah. it? And did you get three or five on a strand? I think it was only three. Th but, and I remember 1995. I don't know why that number stuck in my head. The only reason I remember is I think I was on a show and they, they came in and they flew out yes absolutely and do you remember they were actually faceted so you didn't have all of this surface area wasn't druzy they were kind of faceted up so you just got a little bit in the middle yes. that was for some reason in my mind i've got 1995 i could be wrong it could be more it could be less but whatever it is i remember they were so popular and they were an absolute bargain these i don't know how we've got the price but we have today all three for you nine pounds and 95 pence i know i know <laughs> I need those. I need those because I'm just thinking Christmas Day jewellery. Yeah. Oh. How blam. They're like having a little piece of a winter wonderland around mm. your neckline. They are just amazing. Yeah. I just think of snow and skiing and oh, just beautiful. That is, but show you kind of in relation with the neck. You can see the sparkle from there. <laughs> That's amazing. The quality of this is phenomenal and you're getting three. Well done multi buyers, well done all if you get in your hands on this. I'll let you know I'm heading towards my last chance saloon on these already. Do give it a go if you're watching at night, always give it a go, always give a little ring in just in case because sometimes you know people will change their, mind, their minds or payments won't go through whatever whatever. Always give it a go because we might have some left over for you, we might have one or two left. Um, look at all three of them. Oh. Honestly, get them home to appreciate that quality because I've got to be honest, I don't think the studio lights do these justice. Nine ninety five for all three of those for you today. Now, if you remember t nearing the beginning of the show, I showed you that gorgeous um, emerald. That's coming up for you in a moment. Now, first off, one thing I need to point out is that both of these strands are... Not, sorry, I got completely mesmerised there. Um, both of these strands are completely and absolutely natural straight away need to tell you that two strands one topaz one emerald this is luxury special let's start with the topaz shall we white topaz 70 carats worth of your white topaz and these are in your wheels now the amazing thing I find with natural white topaz is the fact that although it is natural and it is that clearer variety, you get play of colour. Do you at home see what I mean? This isn't white topaz. Well, it is. It is as a name. It is white topaz. But with your highest end of topazes, and because of the, the clarity and the brilliance within that, and because of the way topaz forms, 
although it's white topaz, you get these elements that almost look clear chrismic in a way. Uh, you get elements of blues and yellow. So this is white topaz, but due to the quality of this, you will or you should see other colours. Can you? Be honest with me, can you? I can to the eye, I don't know if you can at home. Can you see just white, just clear? Or can you see blues? Can you see yellow? Hints of pink? Hints of pink, my director's saying. That is quality, and it's almost due to a pleochrismic element to this gem. This is not the normal, normal average quality of white topaz. It really isn't. This is your boutique, your luxury, your high-end quality. So much so that we've paired it with this. Listen. Emerald, we all know that around 99% of emeralds on the market is treated. It's fine, it's recognised, it's not a big issue. To some people it is. For me, personally, if I'm going to buy some of the big four, I personally will look for the untreated variety. That's just me. Um, I like the, the natural element to the big four. The other gems doesn't really bother me that much, but for the big four it does. One of the main, well, one of the treatments often applied to emerald is um, filler. We fill it a lot. It's irradiated, it's heated, etc. But the filler, which is a big one, we fill um, emerald to give it clarity. You know that both of these are natural. I've told you that. This is natural with clarity. Now, that doesn't happen often at all. Look at that. That's clarity for you. Now, not only is that pretty impressive, but also the location of this is, it's almost unimaginable how hard this is to get from this location. This is your Zambian Emerald. Now, the reason Zambian Emerald is so, so, so tricky to get your hands on is because, well, A, it's one of the most popular of all the emeralds because you do have the opportunity to get clarity in it like we have here. But also the colour of Zambian emerald is said to be more popular than the colour of the uh, Colombian emerald. Um, so we're already seeing that nature in it and that popularity in it. The thing with Zambian emerald is the rarity of the gem itself. Now the way this is mined is in these open pits. So obviously there's lots of different types of mines, some you have to drill into the ground for, etc. But this Zambian is an open pit, so it's kind of on the surface of the earth really. Um, and the open pit itself, we have to sift through so much rough to be able to get your hands on this gemstone. It's almost kind of hard to get your head around. So the, the easiest way to describe it, I suppose, is you have got, this sounds ridiculous, but I will explain myself. You have got a, ready for this. What, what are you saying there? Are you talking to me? You have got, you are or you're not, you're not. You have got, a one in 12 million chance of getting your hands on a piece of emerald in that mine, okay? One in 12 million, why? Because you have to, they have to sift through and work through 12 million grams worth of rough, of soil, of dirt, to get one gram's worth of this gem from that location. It's astonishing, isn't it? It is, it is a bit mind boggling. It truly, truly is. It's all, it's downright confusing, isn't it really? But why do they do it? You're probably thinking, well, I've no, why would you do that? Why would you sift through all of that? Well, because of how popular this gem from that location is and how unique it is. 500 million years in the making. This gem has been up to around, around 500 million years in the making. You then have to sift through around 12 million grams worth of rough to get just a grams worth of this. And I've actually got 20 carats worth on this strand. 
That's just astonishing, isn't it? From three by one to six by four. Let's pair these beauties up because let's face it, this is luxury, this is high end, this is, these probably for a lot of people would be the gemstones that you would hope one day to acquire. Today could be that day. Both of them for you. I understand that that price point for some people may, may be out of your price range. I understand that. I also in understand that a lot of you might be looking at these two pairings together thinking, I really want to own those. I really want those in my life because, do you know what? I'm used to working with things like your agates. I'm used to working with things like your quartz, your pyrite. I'm used to that. I want something special. I want to be able to create some pieces for my loved ones, for my best friends, for my family, for myself, that actually I can look at them and think, wow, I've been able to work with a summit point of excellence. We're going to try and give some more of you the opportunity to do that, so we are going to actually drop the price. Congratulations in advance. £44.95 for you today. And I will say to you that I do not think these should have been the £60 price point at all. I really, really don't. £44.95 for both of them. What do you think of that? Yeah, that strand of topaz looks rainbow coloured from here. Yes. It looks like all the pastel tones coming to life. I can see blues and pinks and it just looks amazing next to the emerald as well though. Just think what a combination. If you put those both together, if you wanted to keep them separate, I just think how high end, how luxurious and how fortunate you are if you can get these at home. They are just amazing. Can I ask you something? If I was to give you this topaz strand for free, I'd bite your hand off. <laughs> That's amazing. This strand of Zambian emerald, because of the location, because of the quality alone, if you're to buy this on our website right now, forty-seven pounds and ninety-five pence. This strand is £47.95. Both strands are £44.95. Now I know I'm stating that quite obviously, but it's important to do so because you've got to understand that not only am I giving you this strand for free, I'm also taking money off this strand. What do you think of it now, Sarah, when you think of it like that? I'm taking money off the emerald, because this by itself yeah. is 47 pounds, and I'm giving you that for free. I think, you know, if, if you can afford to get these two strands home, you are going to be so amazed. And I honestly think, you know, although it's a considered purchase, I think it's just an amazing, amazing bundle together. Mm. And I think, you know, the fact that you're getting actually money off the emerald and then getting that other strand for free, wow. Yeah. They are amazing strands. Totally. Get your authenticity certificates. Cannot say that strongly enough because mm. they're both natural, because they're both beautiful, and because it will have those location names on there, which at the end of the day will help you sell your jewellery. You buy your emerald, you get some money back, and you get a topaz for free. Congratulations. You lot have just got yourself true, true quality. Um, with sort of £17 off something. Um, wax cord we're going to next. Now you can talk to us about the wax cord really well, Sir Alvin, because of course it's going to be great for things like your kumihimo. It is. It's great for all your braided, macrame techniques, your kumihimo techniques. Even if you just want to make a very simple neckline piece, you know, where you want to take three strands and do a normal hairstyle plait through it. I mean, very, very simple. You can do so many different things with it. Um, the wax cord is slightly different because of the finish on it. It has a tendency, um, if you're doing macrame pieces, to give you a looser knotted appearance because it doesn't, a satin cord seems to sort of really hold its knots tightly whereas a wax cord seems to be a little bit more um, of a looser knot but that's actually quite a nice style to go for. It's brilliant in the kumihimo, 
So, you know, you could just use it in so many different ways. Um, and I just love having varieties of chords because I would be looking and thinking, you know, I can use my wax chords alongside my satin chords, alongside my sari chords, um, all of those different mediums together. And don't be afraid to mix and match. So if you put a strand of this wax cord with a couple of strands um, of the sari in a Kamehameha braid, because you've got that difference of thickness, it changes the braid. It changes right. the effect you get. It gives a different look, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Uh, Sarah, you've managed to escape without a game so far today. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It is the alliteration game, possibly the hardest of all the games. I will start. Essentially, if you're new to us, um, <laughs> we, we play games sometimes, and one of our favourites is the alliteration game. So we have to come up with names for the colours that say what the colours are, but give you a little bit of a bit of a other idea. I'm going to start. Go on then. Oriental Orange. Ooh. That's yours, Sarah. Tranquil Turquoise. It's sort of a turquoise green. Turquoise! Oh, it's dark green. Oh, is it dark green? Okay. Uh, turquoise. Mm, Mediterranean Forest. That's not alliteration. Is that not alliteration? No, Mediterranean Forest. It needs to begin with an M. Oh, it needs to begin with an M. Or, or an M. Oh, right, C. I'm going to have the same letter. Yeah, exactly. Oh, goddess green. Goddess green. There Good. Go. I like that. I like that. I have got your regal red. <laughs> you don't have to roll your ass, but, you know. <laughs> this is another one. Oh, you've got another green. Oh. Know. It's a different um, one, though, isn't it? It's a different one. Garden fresh green. Garden green. Garden green. Yeah. Oh, I like that. You're right, because it is, isn't it's it? It's really, yeah. I'm going to go bohemian black. I'm saying yeah. bohemian because it's kind of waxy. You've got that kind of like chilled out flair to it. Ooh. That's a hard one. <laughs> Some people might think I'd purposely put them in this order. Some people might. I did. But that's... <laughs> <laughs> go on. Yo, go. yo, yellow. <laughs> yo, yo, yellow. I like that. Good one. I think my son's got a yo-yo that's that colour. I like that. Yo, yo, <laughs> yellow. Um, so you're getting 10 metres worth of each of this. Your colour, uh, you've got a metres worth of them all. Your price today should be £11.70. But for 60 metres worth of your wonderful cord, your price today is just... Six thousand ninety-five pence. Coxie O five is your code on this today at six thousand ninety-five pence for sixty meters. That's a bit fantabulous, isn't it? It is. It's just amazing. I just I can't get over the value that we get with our cords at Jewelry no, Maker. It's amazing, isn't it? It is. We do a real good job of it. And having, as I said, having had to buy them elsewhere before Jewelry Maker did them. <laughs> Bad. Do treat yourself to it today. It gives you a really nice effect. It's almost the kind of rustic appeal, a rustic feel and appeal to this. Let me flip that one around again. Um, all of these are versatile. They're super duper strong for you as well. And like I say, they are the one mil. So at gems with your decent sized drill holes, they will absolutely 110% squeeze through there, won't they? they will. What else could we create with these pieces? Oh gosh. Maybe for brand new spanker beginners. Um, you can do all of your techniques, so straight through from very basic Shambhala style bracelets through to, um, you know, the world's your oyster. I mean, you know, the Deb Rudge style freeform macrame type pieces that she yeah. does, you know, yeah. right through all those mediums. But I love using these for neckline pieces to make bracelets for children. I do all sorts of different things with them. Um, it's just you can even crochet with them you can knit with them you can put them on the french knitting um device you can do all of that with it you can twist them if you've got the wire twister with the clear plastic disc yeah i know what you mean if you put a little bit of wire in there and create little arches you can put your cord through it and twist your cords oh good i like that so you can do so many different things with it you can have loads of different yeah. looks loads and loads congratulations all of you 6.95 for you today Oh, I adore these coins. <gasps> they are little black dress written all over those. Aren't they? <laughs> Fab. Okay, I've, I've not seen these ones before. I saw them in the drawer earlier on when we had a pre-production meeting and I, my eye was just drawn to them. I think they are fab. To have the coin shape is unusual anyway. To have them in pyrite is really unusual. And then to have a graduation. 
This strand for me is just superb. Honestly, just look at this. Look at how nicely that rests. Oh. Isn't that just a beautiful look? Right, this is what I love about it. If I flatten them against the skin, look at how the light kind of cascades down them in turn. It's so beautiful. Bracelets, rings. You could um, you could faux prong set that with ones, couldn't you? Really easy. Oh, yeah. oh, just a little bit yeah. of uh, beading thread through there a yeah. few times yeah. for a ring or a piece of elastic if you want it to fit everyone. You don't have to go crazy, crazy. Let's just enjoy the sparkle hitting from these because with pyrite that is faceted, you get these really, really small bursts of light, don't you? But because these essentially just have two really big surface areas, two really big tables, that impact is extravagant isn't it it really really is enjoy the toy look at that it is absolutely stunning isn't it um you have got 95 carats worth of this metallic blue colored quartz that we're, sorry quartz pyrite uh, that we have got here um you have got six by nine mil on these ones from the delicate all the way to the bigger and bold LSVX37 is your code to price point. Six pounds and 95 pence. Now seriously, oh my goodness, how stunning would that be? <laughs> Amazing. Disco Diva effect, oh, just on a headband because they're gonna twinkle yep. away so, so much. Because I think sometimes if you have facets in your hair, with the small facets, you, you, it's tricky to see them at some points because they're so, so small. With those, because that is so impactful, even from there, even though it's on the headline, you can see that impact, can't you? Uh, six pounds and 95 pence. Hello, triple buyers, how are you? Uh, 95 carats worth of those. Great for uh, unisex pieces again. On the table, that's over here. Oh, some quartz. Faceted clear quartz. They're a bit cutesy, aren't they? I could see these getting real cosy on a bead loom. They would get real cosy, yeah. And can you imagine the bracelet you would make from those? Just a double row of those on a bead loom, even. Yeah. Oh, amazing. How would you want to use those? You know, with the double drilled ones we had earlier, the double drilled beads? Well, they would look amazing on the bead loom with those. They would look fab, wouldn't yeah, they? They would, absolutely. Yeah, mm. amazing. They look really, really special. Really eye-catching. If you want to see the next two of the gems, let me pop them down on the table for you. Um, you've got 40 carats worth of your clear faceted rounds. They're four mil. We've talked about exactly what you could do with them. They're going to be eye-catching. Your price point's eye-catching as well. <laughs> it's just £6.95 for you today. Let me just show you how these are going to go with different colours. Because it is that clear quartz and they have got the facets. So they're gonna, it's a chameleon gemstone, isn't it? So look, did you get that agate earlier on? See how it picks up that color, spans it through. Isn't that beautiful? What about, can you see it working through there? Oh, because of the quality of this. Clear quartz, I think, is one of them that can actually be underestimated, can't it? But actually, because of its simplicity and because of its beauty standalone, it, it works as the perfect partner for every gemstone because it takes the colour and the appeal of the gemstones and spans it through itself. It's almost a magnifier, I think, isn't it? Four of the gems. £6.95 for you today on your four mil clear quartz. Congratulations, they are beautiful. Can we squeeze in one more before we go over to see Sarah's challenge? Oh. Oh yeah, no, I like this. No, I'm like, oh, it's my favourite gemstone. Oh, of course I want to do this. Fire opal heat is all I can say from this. The heat, the impact, the fire, the warmth, the breadth of this entire strand is astonishing. The fact it has been colour graded for you makes it spectacular, doesn't it? But truly, 
truly, truly realistically, you can use this however you wish, however you like. I have got opalescence within here, which is hard for you to see. I've not got the pin fire personally, but I have got the opalescence, especially on these paler toned ones. That is due to the quality. This is your fire opal, it is from Mexico. Your price point today, but it's my favorite jam. So I'm gonna take it lower than it should be. That's the price you've had, that's the price you've enjoyed it at. You have bought this time and time and time and time and time and time again at that 30 pounds price mark. And Joe, you know what, you got yourself a bargain then, but now, at £19.95, but £10 off, we've taken a third off the price. A third off the price. Oh, why not? Um, £19.95. You love Opal too. What do you think of that price? For the fact that I've got Opal Essence in here as well, which you don't always get with your Fire yeah. Opal, not unless it's really high quality. Yeah. That is an amazing price. I mean, of that quality, of that size, even if you were getting half of that price, you would be getting yourself an absolute bargain. Yes, I think you're right. And, you know, they are just, do you know, I look at those and I just think warm, cosy fires, just looking into the hearth and just all those memories it brings back and just, I can't help but fall in love with them. They're mm. just amazing. Absolutely right. And what I will say is sometimes it's nice to get those kind of uh, lower end of the scale bargain strands, you know, $6.95 and that sort of thing. But what I will say is when you're getting £30 worth of opal at that price, it's going to be one of those strands and we all do it. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh, wow. Oh my. This is one of those strands. This is one of those strands. The fact we're taking money off makes it even better. Do you want to come on over? Come on then. Let's have a look at what lovely Sarah Alvin has created with the challenge. Oh, wowzers. Now, as a little reminder, what did we have in the challenge? Well, you had two strands of gemstones. You had those black agate cushions that were corner drilled. You then had 50 of those aluminium spacers. You had the gorgeous coins in there as well of the agates. Oh, hello. <laughs> And just about finished. <laughs> and you had um, what else do we have in there? Oh yeah, that gorgeous cord, that beautiful woven high shine cord that we have in there. Look at you doing a wire wrapped ring, Mrs. Oh, very very quick one, but there you go. <laughs> just to show off. Normally would take a lot longer over it, but you know, hey, why not? Fab that, isn't it? Um, talk us through how you've done this piece here because you've really shown those beads off to their potential. Do you know that's just the right angle weave um, and I've just sort of made a shape that I kind of like wanted it to be almost, almost like a heart shape. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, and it, I just got carried away with it because it's so easy with that cord. I actually used the cord to do all the weave with. Okay. So it's one long piece of cord that's running up both sides of the neckline yeah. and then all the way through the beads doing the right angle weave. Oh, that I, is clever. I started at so the very running. bottom and then sort of worked my way around and added the beads to create that heart shape and then I used another two pieces of the cord just to do the um, the herringbone, um, not the herringbone, the half hitch down the neckline. I think that is a really beautiful design. Quite a standout yeah. piece, yeah. isn't it? Well, why not, you know? But wearable. Yeah. Because if that was just gemstones, that would pop, that would be weigh you down. It would. It would be really... Um, it would be a, probably a bit too much yeah. for people to handle, of that size in particular. Yes. But because of how beautiful and lightweight these aluminium beads are... Yeah. Why not? Really yeah. eye-catching. And I just... You know, I'm not... I don't shy away from big pieces of jewellery. I mean, I did when I first started making jewellery, but now I actually quite enjoy the drama you can get. But having the lightness of those beads just really means that you can have all that drama. You can have a sizeable piece. And really make it wearable. <laughs> but I catch it at the same time. Yeah. Fab. Um, how did we do this one? Again, <laughs> wire! <laughs> Sarah, Alfie, what's happened to you? It's a really, really simple wire work pendant. It's for... Oh, well, it's two lengths of wire, folded in half, create the bail. And it's a bit like I showed you how to just sort of weave the wire in and out of it themselves to make that cover for the Kumihima pendant. Yeah. Just keep going until you get a base. And then I use the four tails to add two beads on the, the, over the bottom, and the two longer tails, I just added the beads and the spacer beads, and I just twisted them up, added some little tassels on the bottom. That's it. I love how it's movement. Yeah. I like that you've got that. And I like how the bail is simple, because I've got to say, I, you know, dabbled in wire work, do love wire work, but for me, my bails, 
I think I over I think I overdo them. I think I take too much time and esh, effort and pressure to do an amazing bale. Even though I spent all that time to make the main piece look good, sometimes I can go OTT on the bale and if it's not quite right, it really irritates me. That's it. And sometimes you can spend I don't know, an hour wire wrapping a bale and you've not even made a pendant. Yes, you've made you've a bale. You've done the bale. Yeah. Um, and you know, quite often, you know, all you need is a loop, you know, and it can be hidden behind the wire work piece You're even. Right. So you don't even need to make a wire work ba um, wrapped bale. You can actually just hide a simple loop behind the main part of the wire work and then just get on and enjoy making the actual pendant itself. Absolutely. Which is what true. you want to do. You don't want to spend an hour frustrating yourself over a bit that may not look right and then. And that's what I do time and yeah. time again. It's ridiculous. Um, and then <laughs> finally, you've got your bracelet, which is beautiful, eye catching piece. Yeah, just very, very easy to do. Sure, and uh, I just love it. Fantastic. Sarah, thank you so much. I loved all the mixed mediums oh, today. It's been absolutely I've fab to have you. When are you with us again? Back on Wednesday. Back on Wednesday. Have Morning a fab show. time in uh, Glasgow. Oh, Good I luck shall. with all of your workshops, etc. <laughs> um, I am back with you very, very soon. Tomorrow it's Jenny and Debbie Kershaw. Stay tuned. I'll see you soon. <laughs>The latest edition of the Lure Book is now available. This highly regarded gemstone encyclopedia features over 1,300 pages full of facts and knowledge. Discover the places, the people and the stories behind every gemstone. To get your hands on a copy, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Did you know that the Jewelry Maker phone number is free from a UK landline? Now you can spend those extra pennies on more shopping.